What's up, y'all? How y'all doing? I see we got uh, Sperlin in the house. Was here early. Dante Ellis. How you doing? Make sure my uh, situation is set up right because I don't have my microphone plugged in. Uh, let me get my... Let me get this right. Let me get the microphone right. Hold on, y'all. Get this microphone right. Oh, hold up. Hey. All right, now we go. Here we go. All right, yeah, Dante Ellis and Sperlin, thank you for coming early. Cliff and Rue, how you doing? Hope in the Philippines. What's going on? Thank you guys for coming early. Now, I wanted to get into this topic today because... You know, a lot of times, you know, when you come to the Philippines, everybody knows, um, you know, you get off the plane, it's all smiles and everything is all sunshine and roses. And you want to know, is that love real? Is it like real or is it just for the money? So I'm going I'm to get into that. Now, a lot of times when you see that love, but first we make sure everybody gets in first. We got Hope in the Philippines, John Thomas. Good evening. How you doing? We post some of you guys here. Let me see here. Spelling Edwards. Dante Ellis here. Who else we have? Cliff and Rue. Hope in the Philippines. What's going on? We have John Thomas. How you doing? We also have Rennie McCray. How you doing? And thank you guys for coming. I'm just going to get right into it. Actually, no, I want to wait. I want to get into it so bad, but I'm going to wait. Because there's going to be a ton of people here. And I should be talking about on my own. With you guys. So I'm just waiting a little bit. Let some people get in. But, um, see, the topic, this is a topic most people think. Because, you know, when you see other people's videos, you know, you keep hearing people saying, oh, you know, everybody's just so happy. Everybody's just so happy. And Filipinos are. They are extremely happy people. And the thing that I've learned over time is that they want to know how you're doing. You know, they want to get to know you. Like, they're actually curious. and they, they do care about how you're feeling. They do. They genuinely care. Okay. But you will find some Filipinos... Not many. There are some that just look at you as a dollar sign. There are some that look at you as a dollar sign. But for the most part, they do care. Now, I can tell you this. I can tell you that they care more in the Philippines than when you go to a lot of other countries. That That's a good thing that you can look at. You can look at, say, if you're down and out. There's even been situations where the Philippines have helped out foreigners. And that's real. I'm sure you guys have heard of it. You know, like there's even foreigners that's here in the Philippines that are bums, right? That are actually out in the streets. And Filipinos are the one that give that give them a helping hand. You know, it'll be foreigners that are here in the Philippines. They won't even care. They walk right over them. And it'll be a Filipino person that'll take money out of their pocket and give it to them. You know, so I think it's I think it's a mixture of both. I know a lot of you guys answered. Let me take a look at that real quick. Let me look at let me take a look at that one second, guys. Hold on, let me pull this up really quickly. Turn it turn it on some key. That's a down. Oh yeah. Probably can't use that one. Let me go into my community. Look at that with you guys. Okay, so now let me share my screen here. All right, let me share my screen. So now we go to my community. I want to see what you guys are saying. You send me the link already? No, I didn't send you the link. I'm going to send it to you, Kay. I got you on the link. All right, so now we're in the community. Now, most of you guys said it's the culture, right? Most people said it's the culture, and that's right for the most part. Now, the money does have a part to play in it, too. Good morning. What's up, Tony Anderson? The professor, what's going on? How you doing? But the money does have a part to play in it too, okay? Now, 
and that's the great thing too, because I'll tell you what happened. Actually, it's not a great thing. I, I said it wrong, but what ha- what's going to happen is you, when you come to the Philippines, especially now, the Filipinos are going to be even more happier because you're bringing revenue to the country. So it's going to be the money. A lot of it's going to be the money. They still care. Like I said, guys, this is going to be the part where you're going to find the people that care the most. But they're going to be so excited to see you, you know. You'll find more more so that people are, you know, just looking, smiles, and they're really happy to see you. Now, especially in the tourist areas, because you guys know when I went out to the place I went when the Philippines opened a little more, even for the people here, I went over to um, Oriental Mindoro. And I went to, uh, I forgot the name of it. It's slipping my mind right now. But I went over there to the beach, right? And they had no one to sell to. It was the most tragic thing that I've ever seen. People were literally begging me, hey, buy something for me. Buy something for me. And people would say to me, hey, buy something. I have no one to sell to. And it was it was sad because I didn't need the stuff. I really didn't need it. And I was finding myself frustrated and then I kept looking at K and K said, no, babe, no, just deal with it. No, babe, just deal with it. But, you know, I found myself looking at them saying, Kuya, you have nothing that I need. There's nothing that I need that you're selling that I need. You know, they sell, they will sell you souvenirs and certain things. And I didn't need any of the souvenirs. You know, so there was nothing that I needed there. And... I instantly felt bad for the people because it's like, man, I know you have to make money. Like some people, I would just buy things. Some people, I would even give money. And I didn't need their stuff. I would just give them, hey, here's 100 pesos. But I didn't really need need anything. What's going on? We got Mike. You love to travel in the house. How you doing, Mike? You love to travel. Also, Tony Anderson is here now. Thank you for coming, guys. I didn't really need anything. But you guys are going to find, though. When you're in the Philippines, it's going to be mixed. It's going to be a lot mixed. Now, you're going to find situations where if you're too nice, you know, you find situations where people come up to you and say, hey, look. And it happened to me when I was in um, when I was in BGC yesterday. People come up to you and they'll be selling something you don't really need, right? Or they'll just ask you, hey, you have you have money. And they'll say, they'll give you a note. You know, they give you a note, and it even happens to people in the Philippines. They give you a note, and when they see foreigners, this is what I noticed yesterday in BGC, I was targeted. People could tell they heard me talking. They know I was making a video, so I was automatically targeted. So everyone that had those, that hand you those notes, anybody knows about that? Like the people that hand you the notes? Everybody that hand you those notes saying, you know, I need this to feed my family, I got about three of those, three of those last night. I got three of those notes, right? So... Now, when I when that happened, I already knew what it is. Like, you start to know what it is right away because you're a target. They hear you speaking English or they hear you or they see you. They can tell. Say if they see you wearing a shirt like this or they can tell if you're a little bit more overweight than everyone else. They'll know. You'll stand out like a sore thumb. And the Filipinos will come up to you and, you know, they're going to ask you. They're going to ask you, hey, you know, or, or they, people even tell you. They go up to you and go like this. You know, now, when it happens, of course, I know you're not going to get frustrated. But when you start giving, well, this is what happens. Say if you're in, in a busy market area, right? And then you give to one person, then you ha- it'll feel like the half of the market came up to you and asked you for money. That's going to happen to you in the Philippines. Anybody that's ever been here knows what I'm talking about. But that will happen to you. And that's something you got to get used to. But guys, from what I can tell lately, big man 7917, what's going on? But from what I can tell lately, with the way they're getting more lax on the rules, right? The way they're getting more lax on the rules, the Philippines is opening soon. You can tell, like the writing's on the wall. The Philippines is opening soon. And I know when Cliff and Rue came in, uh, Cliff didn't need a vaccination. I know a lot of that had to do. They probably weren't checking at the time. But foreigners coming in on your own, they will definitely be checking to make sure you're vaccinated. Shelton, thanks a lot for the love. Greetings, new sub. Thanks a lot for the love, man. 
And then Mike said it. Mike said, I know exactly what you're saying, Jay. It happened to me when I was there. No, it's it's going to happen. And sometimes it happens too much. And I just want you guys to try your best not to get frustrated because what will happen is you'll get targeted. And then when you start giving, when you start giving, it's not going to stop. People will keep coming, especially if you're in an area like a divisory or say if you're in a province somewhere and you're by the market, you know, people will see you and will, and will target you. You're going to stand out like a sore thumb. But in tourist areas, though, see, it's a difference. You're going to get, say, when you're in the regular towns, not in the tourist area, you're going to get that energy. So you're going to look out for it. You're going to look out for that. And then you got to be the guy, you know, you can't give too much because you give too much. That's when, they, Jay, they did ask for about vac vaccinations, but they were just not requiring. Okay. Well, especially for you, though, uh, Rue. Well, Rue, you're a Filipina. So that's like, say, say if I came in with K, it probably wouldn't be an issue. But if I came in by myself, I probably would need it. Not for me, because uh, I'm a permanent resident. But say if it was a tourist, if I was a tourist, they would say, okay, uh, we need your vaccination card. And I, I can't I can't call it to be honest with you guys. I haven't traveled out and back in yet. I did travel back in on my own. They didn't require that I have a vaccination. This was around December. But I know now, the times it is now, it's I'm sure it's definitely gonna be required from you guys. What's going on, Harry Man? How you doing? Michael Miller, how you doing? Welcome, welcome. But that's the thing. But for the most part, guys, you guys voted right. You know, everybody that voted, voted right. You know, for the majority, they really want to know how you're doing. You know, even the people that come to you and ask for money, of course, they look at you and they, they, they have a need. But that's just how it is, you know. That's just people down and out. And it's never going to stop. It's always going to be like that. You know, and sometimes, sometimes I, I, I have to give because... You know, who knows? Maybe one day I'll be down and out. I always think like that. I'll be down and out. I'll need a helping hand one day. And I hope that someone will give to me, you know? So when I see them, I feel sorry for them. Not in the as a fact like, oh, you're you're poor and I'm rich. Or I have money. I feel sorry like, man, you know, maybe some choices they made in their life that led to that situation. It's always a, an issue that you don't know about. You know, and I don't get all down and out about it. I just think of that in my head. Because the Filipino hustles, the Filipino hustles are all are all the same, really. Like, it's all the same thing. You know, and, and the thing that's sad about the Philippines, a lot of times, and a lot of families, and that's just the culture the way it is, there is no saving for a rainy day. You know? There's no putting nothing away for a rainy day. So you find a lot of times... When the Filipinos down and out, they're really down and out because they don't have any backing. But then the kids are starting to learn. Because even when I when I interviewed the girl in the market, you know, and I asked if she would date a foreigner, and she said she wouldn't date a Filipino or a foreigner. But the thing was, I'm sure she was saving. I can tell she wasn't thinking like her family. You know, she said her family was broken, but she was she was working hard because I know she was planning on not being the same, not being like her family was. And saving, she see she she ended like you know what I can't date any guy because I don't have time for guys because I'm getting my money right and and that's not always right because you see it happens to women in America you know they you know all about I'm an independent woman and she wasn't like that it was a different kind of feel you know it's a different feel in the Philippines you have women like that but she it wasn't the case with her like I knew it was coming from my heart when I talked to her when me and Kay talked to her and. I was sad because I was like, man, this woman's broken. What's going on, uh, Celeris? How you doing? Keep safe and enjoy. Yeah, no, I felt sorry for her too, Michael. I felt sorry for her too. Because, you know, she, what happens, she's letting her past ride with her out into the future. It happens a lot. People do that. And, you know, she needed help. She needed counseling. Not so much a therapist. She needed somebody to talk to. Guys, I was actually speaking with a person that's a, uh, I think it's a psychologist out here, and he deals with people in Manila. I wanted him to come on to the show 
not talk about you know people certain cases, but just talk about the situation. But that's for another time. I was talking with him. He said, you know, he said, he said, Jay, you know, people in the Philippines are really going through it, right? And he said, they need this need somebody to talk to. He said, you're right. You said it in the video. This need somebody to talk to. Do you ever hand out food? Oh, yeah, I've hand out tons of food, boy. Tons of food. I still do get food, but I used to do it on video, Roy, but I stopped doing it on videos. I stopped doing it on videos. But yeah, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do certain things. I'm gonna bring certain videos back, you know, where I go out and um help people, but not in a way to to glorify myself. That's why I stopped doing it. Because I didn't want to come across like, okay, I'm glorifying myself, like I'm doing this for, for the people. So I stopped. It's, I feel they make opening a bank account so hard in the PA, so the Filipinos save money. Well, they get caught up with the save the money in, under a mattress. And the only thing bad about I don't like about that is, you know, you end up not saving, really saving the money. So I don't like the saving money under the, under a mattress aspect. But the way the world is going now, I get it. But still, it's really no saving the money. You know, you got to not really invest it. You got to buy something worth it, you know. Buy something that's worth it, that's going to make your money last. Helping out with a legal group. Help out with a le legit group like Rotary. And I'm looking for a legit group, actually. I'm looking for a legit group, right, that's um, actually helping out Filipino children that are dealing with um, abuse. I'm looking for a group that handles that. You know, I'm looking for a group that handles that because... You know, you have so many guys that come here and that go out in, in the areas, right? They're in these same areas like Angeles City and they're showing the negative side of it, but they don't show the negative, negative side of it, you know? They just show it for the money. And I, I'll be honest with you, I'm getting tired of seeing it. Let's talk. I am the immediate past president, jrotary.com. I'm getting tired of seeing it. The guys come that come out here, and they go show videos in the um, in the sex areas where all of the crazy things happen there. That's not seen, you know. Where the under underage girls go to work, the same things I made the video about. These guys promote those areas, you know. And I'm not saying I'm not judging guys that go in those areas, and that go in there and meet girls, but to, for him to, for people to be vlogging it. You know, it's like, come on now. It's like they're making a come up off of the uh, the neg negativity in the Philippines. It's disgusting. You know, I don't know how you guys feel about it. But it, it's disgusting. People who really care about their fellow man, woman, give without publicity. Those who donate and promote it are only promoting them. So exactly here, man, that's why I stopped. That's why I stopped uh, doing a video. I, I wasn't promoting myself, though. I gave with the intent, with the thought in mind to show others to do the same thing. And I would even say it in my videos. I would say, hey, guys, when you come to the Philippines, do the same thing. And there were tons of people that said, yeah, when I come, I'm going to do the same thing. It is a form of trafficking, Mike. It is. It is a form of trafficking. It is. When guys come out here and shoot the videos of those areas like they're trafficking. Yeah. And Joji said, I, you just want to inspire. And that's why I did it to inspire. And I would set it. And I seen a video. I'm not going to say any names of a guy that was helping people out, buying people food. And he kept looking in the camera. And I'm like, oh, no, you look crazy. He, he kept looking in the camera like, like, look at, they look like, look at me. I'm doing good. And it's like, oh. And I, I wanted to, like, message him. I wish I had his phone number say, bro, I, I understand what you're doing. I'm not judging you. Because there'd be people that go there and go on his videos and judge him. Because he kept looking in the camera going, and I'm like, oh. Every time he did it, I was like, don't. Th he didn't realize. And you can see that he was looking to do it to glorify himself. He kept looking in the camera. And I'm like, no, stop looking in the camera like that. You guys don't. It, it bugged me out. It was the most freakish thing. Like, he's giving, helping people out. And then. He would go like, like this guy. And I said, <laughs> why are you doing that? 
I can tell you glorifying yourself. Like, it looks crazy. But I, I would never go there and comment on this video. I would never say nothing. I would never bash anybody. But I said, that's why you're doing it. Because you, the way you keep looking at the camera, I can tell you're looking for glorification. And then in the videos, it was like people glorifying him. And I'm like, oh, man, you got what you wanted, you know? And he said, I see Filipinos dealing with generational poverty and historical trauma. You're right, Jay. These folks need someone to talk. They do. A lot of people need someone to talk to. Everybody needs someone to talk to, you know, and, and I'm tired of it being that way in the Philippines where it's to the point where Filipinos feel they can't really talk to someone about their problems because they look crazy. It's not true. And it's not true. Service above self. Yeah. Exactly, Joji. That's what it's about. Service above self. And I seen it. I seen I, I was watching because I watched another expats vlog and I watched the vlogs. And then when he kept looking at the camera, I said, no, why are you looking at the camera like that? Like, it looks off. It looks off. And I said, man, you're glorifying yourself. I see it. You can't. <laughs> God, you, man, man. See, I can't bash anybody. And, and that's why I took down the video. That's why I took down the video. The other day, you guys know I made a video, right, talking about a certain person. I had to take it down. I don't know if you, I'm sure when you guys here have seen it. I made a video talking about somebody that was per, the worst of the worst, right? And I took it down because I realized after a while, me and Kay consulted with each other, right, guys? And I, I realized he was, he's really a sick individual because he didn't feel, he, he felt he didn't do anything wrong. You know, and he's still fighting it. He still fought it in the courts and he's still, he's still going after people trying to make himself back big again and get into the spotlight. And then when I seen that, because Kay, Kay showed it to me, I seen that and I said, I'm going to take this down because this man is sick and he needs help and I can't judge this man. You know? And it, it's true, guys. Like it's in the Bible, thou shalt not judge. And I've said, you know what? I feel like I'm judging him. I have to take this video down. And that video would have been a video to probably get 500,000 views. It was going to take off. I said, no, this is not right. I said, I got to pull this video. I pulled it right away. 12 hours, pull. I said, no, I can't, I can't do this because this man needs help. Like if I seen him in the streets, I would go talk to him, give him a hug and say, brother, you need, I would love to talk to you. You need help. You need help. I would tell him straight to his face. Not in a video, not bashing him. I would say, brother, you need help. You seriously need help. And I would go up to him and talk to him. And I wouldn't, I would, probably wouldn't say it like that. You guys know what I'm saying. I would approach him in a way, you know, to try to speak with him and actually be cool with him and talk with him. If it looked off to you, imagine the people who want to help and feel they were like that guy. Yeah. That's the thing, yeah, guys. Like, like, like Tony Anderson said, hit the like button, everybody. It, it helps out, but um, yeah. No, um, that's what I said, Cliff. Like, and you know, you because you you're, you deal with this on a regular basis. That's you do that for work. Huh? No, I got off to the top. I got off of the topic about the Philippines a little bit. Huh? No, I'm still talking about the Philippines. You send me there. Yeah, I'm sending you a link now. Okay, said, so what's your topic? 43 watching now. Started streaming three minutes ago. Okay. Let me give this to Kay. Wait one second, y'all. Let me give this to Kay so Kay can join in a little while. But I, and I said I was going to touch base on it. I was supposed to touch base on it yesterday. That's why I touched base on it today. But hold on. Let me send this to Kay, guys. Let me send this to Kay. But, yeah, so let's get right back into it now. Th thanks a lot for the super chat, Henry, man. Thanks a lot, brother. So, yeah, guys, the love. So, yeah, guys, that, that's what I had to say about that. That's why I took that video down for everyone that's seen it and said. Because it was it was like cheek a minute, right? It was cheek a minute. And it's not cheek a minute because it really happened. That's the crazy thing. 
it wasn't cheeky minute. It's a guy that really did what I said he did. But, you know, it was still me pointing fingers at that guy. It did sit right with me. I said, and, and I love my wife for that because, you know, like Filipinas, they're like um, very humble. They're very outspoken in a way, you know, very outspoken. And, you know, Kay came to me and said, babe, she, she, she talked with me. And I said, right away, I said, oh, actually, no, right now, right away. I thought about it and said, and then I said, no, you're right. One thing she said, she said, babe, you're not God. Kay told that to me. <laughs> And that's and, and that's a reality check, you know. When you do something like that, and then it, like, that's what ladies are for. Like ladies are meant are there to help 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 a man out. She's my help me. So when she told me that, right? I said, Oh yeah. Video down instantly. Video down instantly. Because everybody's gonna go to that man and say, and He's sick. He's a sick individual. I'm about to head out. Thank you for letting everyone know about this. Yeah. But seriously, um, guys, that it was a serious situation. I talked about it because it happens a lot. Um, that guy took advantage of the Philippines' age. And, and, and the reason why he was able to do it, actually, no, let me stop. Let me stop. Well, actually, no, I'm going to talk about the situation, but not about him. See, what happened was in the past, right? Because the guy, he wasn't necessarily a um, expat. He was a Filipino. Yeah, I did do the right thing. And so he was able to get away with certain things. And, you know, the man is sick. And if he happened to hear about the video and seeing this, I'm sorry. Because I, I can't judge anyone. And that's all I have to say about that. But, yeah, guys, the love you get in the Philippines now. Big man 7917 said I miss Bangkok. Well, yeah, bro, we're talking about the Philippines right now, not Bangkok. <laughs> but no, um, and that's the thing. That's the difference between Bangkok and the Philippines. Because when I was in Bangkok, everybody was everybody wanted to see you, but I know a lot of that is fake. And Kay's a Filipino that was in Bangkok, and Kay will get on here and tell you most of the people that will come to you are fake in Bangkok, and that's real. Bangkok. Or, Phil or that talent in the Philippines is like night and day. That's the thing. Great example. I love you said that, Big Ben, at 7917, because I was there. Philippines, the love is real. Bangkok, straight fakeness. Straight fakeness. And K will tell you. And K will tell you. Thanks for the super chats, Big Man 7917. I love Bangkok because of the service you get. Now, the thing is, the service in Bangkok is better than the Philippines. That's honesty. That's honesty. You know, because the service in the Philippines is okay. But in Bangkok, the service is a lot better. But it's fake. As far as Philippines, you can deal with the people and really get love from the people. Actual, genuine love. Bangkok, nothing but fakeness. And the woman is really, really about that money. Of course, every woman needs money in the Philippines. Well, of course, a woman doesn't want a guy that's broke. But in Bangkok, the woman wants the money, and she has to have that big house. It's like the opposite. It's like night and day. Philippines customer service isn't that good. It's not that good. And I'm being honest. It's not, Carl Vaughn's. You're right. It's not that good. I tell Kay that all the time. I'm honest. I say, Kay, Philippines customer service is horrible. Carl Vaughn's, I did customer service. I break down to K what service actually is. I was a waiter. I worked in the service industry for years. So I understand customer service, right? Like, for instance, I said it yesterday, and I didn't want to complain. When I was sitting down doing a live stream at the uh, the place I was at, right, I asked the lady for ice cream, right? Um, She... She couldn't like they can't they don't think of let me flip the situation, let me give him what he wants. That's how that's how I would think as a waiter. Okay, we don't have ice cream on the menu, but I can maybe speak with the manager. Let, okay, we don't have ice cream, but let me speak to the manager. And then you know what the manager's gonna say? Make it happen. Nobody does that here. They say, No, sir, we can't do it. No, by the way, they say no. 
And they say it nicely, but still, that's not good customer service. Filipinas are prettier than women in Bangkok. For the most part, but it's kind of, it's kind of like, you know, it depends on what the guy's looking for. It depends on the person. Women are about that money everywhere. They, they are K-Dallas, but more so in Thailand and in the Philippines. I don't know. K-Dallas, if you've been to, to the Philippi- to Thailand, I know you've been in the Philippines. If you've been to Thailand and dealt with the woman there, or if like you understand how they are through like somebody like K, and, and guys know, man, those women there are like vicious when it comes to that bread. They're not playing. You can't give them certain things. It's like they're done with you. Not all the time. You got doing me wrong. I'm not trying to judge it. I'm not trying to judge say, or say all oh, women are like that in Bangkok. I'm sure there's some good women. But, you know, still, for the most part, they're about this. I have aunts in both places that were pretty to me. Yeah. Mike, you love to, Mike, you love to travel, said Filipinas are prettier. We can be, take a vote on it, guys. Who, who do you think is prettier, Filipinas or, or a woman from Thailand? Uh, what do you call a uh, woman from oh, uh, Thai girls? Thai girls and Filipinas. Filipinas to me, because I'll tell you, um, man, when you're here, you know, you got to be here too. You got to be here and you got to be in places. What's going on, Jack Hobson? How you doing? Harry Man said Filipinas. Mikey Love the Shabu said Filipinas. To me, I think Filipinas are prettier. Yeah, Thai versus Bene. I think the guys, girls from Thailand are pretty too. But for the most part, when I was there, and for the most part when I'm here, Philippines wins. Philippines wins to me. The PH needs a Kevin Samuels version. A lot needs reality check. Well, uh, women do need to do reality check. And... John, when I'm going around and, and, and I'm dealing with women, it's kind of like, not like Kevin Samuels, but I, I do that with women now. And I'm just not checking them. And I don't want to check them, actually. I don't want to check them. I think what Kevin Samuels is doing is needed, especially for black women. But Filipinas are not that, that cold. John, what's happening in America with black women is on a whole nother level, man. The Philippines is nowhere near that. <laughs> yeah. Like, that that would be almost mean if that was done in the Philippines, what Kevin Samuels is doing. And he wouldn't do it. Like, even Kevin Samuels would be here and wouldn't do it. Of course, at all, I think a Filipina needs to do it to the Philippines, to scammers, to the scammers. I think that's who needs it the most because it's the scammers. For the most part, Filipinas, for, it's, guy, it's the guys for the most part. I blame it on the guys. I blame it on the guys of when Filipinas are certain ways, especially like um, when I interviewed Abigail, right? And like Abigail was like her friend was a scammer, but Abigail knows and her friend knows too. It's the simps in America that allow it and also other places that allow Filipinas to be scammers. So we can't blame the Filipinas or I know some Filipinas need a reality check is true. But it's like night and day between U.S. and the Philippines. Guys being too naive, yep. That's what makes that's what makes the Filipinas, you know, the way they are that that are scammers. Because the guys go on there and say pretty much say take everything from me, you know. They say take everything from me. But for the most part. Yeah, that's that's my uh my window background. But for the most part, you know, you'll be for the most part that's online. And here, when you come to the Philippines, you're gonna get love and actual genuine love. And I'm so happy big man seven nine one seven. I'm gonna have Kate talk to talk about it when she gets on. I'm gonna have Kate talk about it when she gets on, because Kate can tell you. Kay worked in Thailand, she lived out there for four years. And Kay has told me so many stories of how the people are so fake. <laughs> and they just deal with they just deal with things. They don't open their mouths. I think that's what it is. Kay said it was always at her job, right? It was always the Filipinos that got their way because they said something. 
because they were just Filipinos are so real. They're going to complain if they have to complain, Filipinos. So the Filipinos, on job, what was Filipinas? They would open their mouths, and then the, the Thai girls that were teachers would just get ran over. But the Filipinos, the Filipinas, that didn't happen. Like, they got treated like royalty, and then the Thai, the Thai teachers got treated like trash. It was wild, guys. Like, the, what, what happened at K, and I'll let K tell it, actually. I'll wait for K to come on. I'll wait for K to come on. And, 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 and that's the thing. And that's a great compare. I'm so happy he brought it up because places like that is night and day. You're going to get realness. You're in Thailand. You get fakeness. Great customer service, though. Excellent customer service. Philippines, a little bit too real because they're nice in the Philippines. Oh, no, sir. He can't do it. And it's like I get, I get upset going. I don't get too mad now. I just go because I know what they're going to say already. But for the most part, you know, it's like I already know. You can do it, but I just throw my hands up and be done with it. Philippines have that Western culture and English language style. Don't even come close. That's the thing, too, is that you can relate to the people. Because when you go to places here in any almost every major city here, you know, like, say, Davao, Cebu, Manila, you're going to find people that speak English. There's going to be people that speak English. And, and that's the thing about the Philippines. I mean, like, and it's true because when you come here, instantly you can speak with someone. You know, or if you're dating a woman, even online, the woman speaks English. She's not broken English too much to the point where you can understand her. You know, the woman, and Clifford Ruth said that woman I dated from Thailand said, if you love me, you will pay. She became an ex quickly. No, it's true. That's how women in Thailand do. They're driven by money, yep. And um and K Dallas said it too. Women in Thailand are driven by money. Women in the Philippines aren't. But they are they do become driven like money when they see a guy can be taken. And Panay Fabric said, Yes, we can speak English, damn right. But no, when 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 Filipinas see a guy can be taken, they on him. It's kind of like, it's just, actually, I, I talked about it. I talked about it, too, in my video, so I don't want to get too, well, I could get it, because there's only 57 of us here. But um, I got a video coming up where I talk about this. Because what happens, it's kind of like being in jail, right? It's like that. No matter where you are, online, dealing with women, same thing. I, the reason why I related to jail, because that's the most extreme. Because sometimes you got to say extreme so people can get it. Because it's like that in regular life, too. That's like safe in jail, right? Say I'm in a jail with all you guys. All you guys are straight hardcore. Like everything is grimy, right? Because jail, everybody's not thinking just straight grimy, but they're thinking how they can get over on somebody, right? So say I give one guy my chips. One another guy asked me for my cookies. Now I give it to him. I didn't make a barter with him or anything. I just made the biggest mistake of my life. I made the biggest mistake of my life because you know what's going to start happening? Now guys are going to start thinking they can come and take everything that I have from me. And then before you know it, it'll start happening. The same thing when it comes to giving women money, you know, women say, oh, I just need this for that. Then you give it to her. Then it's like, okay. Right? Same thing when it comes to Filipinas, you give it to her. Right. And I'm not talking about a Filipina like that really needs it or that loves you and really doesn't want to get over, but really has it. There's some out there like that. But you can tell that it's not like that if she's asking you right away. You guys know what I'm talking about. Say if you were a Filipina for like five months talking to her online and then she's just say, and she's tell you about a situation and she's really down and you can tell the difference. You know, but still, for the most part, you should look at that too. I do miss the elephant rides in Bangkok. What's going on, Hillbilly? Pyro 2.0. But yeah. And uh, let me see. What, and I think you're right about this. Leo Polos, Paolo Corpus. Philippines also a melting pot. So you can choose different types of Filipinas. That's true too. Philippines is a melting pot. 
and there's many different cultures of Filipinos. That's very true. And I see it here all the time. Like, you got Filipinos that look Chinese, they look Korean. Even Kay looked like she's Korean or something like that. Kay don't look Filipino necessarily. Sometimes if Kay, they see Kay talking English with me, Filipinos think she's a, she think they, they think she's from like Korea or China or something because she don't look that much like Filipino Filipino that much. They think she's from somewhere else. If they ask money, it becomes less about you, more about the cash. Oh no, I already, I already think Filipino, uh, Joseph. I think so. I think it's not even just the the looks. Also, it's the energy. It's the Filipino energy. When you're around, when you're around Filipinas and when you're around Thai girls, the energy is different. The energy is different. It just is. And that's the thing. Yeah, like the professor said, Jonah looks Latin. Yeah, you have women that don't. Filipinos don't look like they Filipino. Yeah, yep. And Floyd Aaron said, I'm talking to one that looks like a Latina. Yep. That's how it looks too sometimes. He said, a lot of varieties of Filipino. Yep. He said it too. Some Filipinos look like Latin. No, it's true. And Henry May said, to ask for money, it becomes less about you and more about the cash. So true. So true. And that happens with um, online dating. To where your guy dating online, it's so much harder now, I'm sure. It's so much harder now, man. Like, if you, if you don't already have someone that you can trust you're talking to online, it's hard. It's hard. You know, like, my boy, I'm, uh, my boy, I've been cooling for a while. He found someone he can talk to. He finally found someone, right, that didn't ask him for money. And then she has a good attitude. And you're talking to her for, like, like three or four months or something like that, she's still not asking him for money. She has her own job here, right? And um, he still didn't get with her. He didn't say, I want to be with you yet. He's still weighing his options with her, but I'm proud of him because he even was a guy who gave money at one point. He gave money, feeling sorry for a girl. And, and, and I got him. I said, bro, why did you do that? Why did you do that? But now he knows, though. He didn't. He didn't know he, you know, guys get caught up in it and caught up in the moment. But oh man, she needs help. And if I help her, then she'll she'll like me. Maybe she'll appreciate me more. You know, because it's not much. Guys get caught up in it. Adore watching from Cebu. Thank you. You've been a spiral buffet, not yet. Not yet. Haven't been a spiral buffet yet, John. I don't think I will ever go to spiral buffet. I should have went before. But now it's like too late in the game. I don't think I'm going to go to Spiral Buffet. Mark Nunn, how you doing? Watching from uh, Fort Hood, Texas. How you doing, Mark? What multimedia companies do they have net-based? Mm, I don't know, really know about that. I'll have Kay get into that more when she comes on. But most media companies do have net based. A big man that seven hour on seven set, like them natural Gordon Brown, not the ones who use glu- glucotheatine. Yeah. And that, that's the thing, man. Um, see, you know, you this is the thing, guys. When I was in BGC, right? The Philippines there, I, they know, they get it because they're a little more westernized. There, I was seeing, I was there yesterday, and I was seeing golden brown Filipinas because they know that's in, you know? They don't use the glucodiatine. I'm, I'm sure there's a lot that do. And then I was over there yesterday, I seen a Filipina that I can tell she was just extra white. Almost like you see them, them, them uh, the Koreans that use it, she was white like that. Like, not even white people are that white, you know? Like... Henry Mann is not even that white. And she she was like bright, past pink white, just like literally white complexion. No melanin at all. Like the disgusting kind of white. She was like that. And I knew she was using, I, I can tell. 
She was using blue blue coat dieting, whatever big man seven nine one seven said. Hello to all. How you doing, JK? What's going on, Dwayne? And Dwayne, uh, we're gonna pick Dwayne and Pinay forever. The uh WAP is coming soon. WAP is coming soon. I gotta do that one soon. Uh, it's gonna be a good one. You guys are gonna be like, I don't want to talk about it too much, but it's coming soon. They know what I'm talking about. Ha <laughs> ha. I ain't that way. No, no, um, no, but Henry Man, I know you're not that way. I've seen you before. That's what I'm saying. That's how white they are, Henry Man. <laughs> That's why I use you as an example. Because everybody's seen your face when you came on before. And you're not that white. Like, man, but you know, you know the white I'm talking about, Henry Man. Like <laughs> I'm talking about like straight white, like because me, look at my complexion, my skin. Henry Man is like maybe two tones lighter. These girls, though, are like. Like this. Yeah, like I'm talking about like this white. And there's really people that's white like that. <laughs> no, it's true, man. And it's like, and I'm looking, I go, you don't know you're beautiful the way you are. And, and some women don't really realize it. You know, like say if you weren't that white and you were even almost, even if you was almost brown, it would look, it would look good. They just don't know. They don't know how the American... The American or the uh, guy from UK looks at it because even like those, even the white guys that come here, they come here, they want the golden browns. They don't want the the, the straight white complexion, but they think that's what's in. And it's the, yeah, the product, it's the products they're using. And it's sad. It's sad, but that's, that's what happens. It's never going to change either. It's never going to change. But yeah, but back back on topic. Um, that's what it is, guy. The K-pop, K yep. K-pop did it. Carl Vaughn's is right. I gotta post that. K-pop is toxic. That's what it is. Cause they watch guys. I gotta tell you how big K-pop is, right? And and Mo and uh, and Mega Mall and Passai, they have a BTS shop, right? And guys, you gotta see the Filipinos that go like say if I'm there and I walk by a certain section of the mall. You see people in there looking like straight fans, and it's like, and and also BTS, like they're selling, they have like, they got food at McDonald's out here, right? Right? K K K gotta get on. Actually, no, she's busy. K, stay away. Actually, out here in McDonald's, they got meals. I think they even have it in the states, so I'm not sure. What do Panes think if you're funny or actually American? Yeah, they do. They do think like that. But no, um, these K-pop guys got mills out here, and they got they have a store. And I remember when the grand opening the store was packed, they were sold out. Like you couldn't book, you could you had to book an appointment to get in the store, and they were booked out for weeks. Cause me and K went there. We said, let's go see what this is about. We said, can we go? No, you can't go in. When's the next available appointment? Four weeks out. Do you think Filipinos realize that Western men prefer Morenos? Morenas? Versus those who use the whitening products. So they use whitening products even less these days. Well, no, I think what's happening. I think what's happening is there's certain women in, in certain areas. Like certain women, maybe in Makati, BGC, maybe Cebu, City. You know, places like that, that know. Because Philipp there's Filipinas that know the game. And there may even be some watching now going, oh, okay, that's what they like, right? Think about it, guys. They know. They watch... They watch lives like this or maybe other guys' lives and they hear what guys are saying and they figure it out, you know. Filipinos used to still – that's why Filipinas do it. Really, it's for the Filipinos. But the Filipinas that – some Filipinos just don't care about it. They, they will never use a skin whitening product. But there are certain Filipinas that know the game, that know, okay, you know what? Yeah, it's colonial mindset. That's so true. It is a colonial mindset. Uh, K, K, K Reeves said it. Yeah, that's true. But there's certain ones that know that that's not what the father, the foreigner favors. And also men in general. Even Filipinos probably don't care. TV or print commercials are to be blamed. Trying to convince trying to convince that fairer skin is way better than brown skin tone. It's true. Like even I remember when my mind blew up, right? My mind had a golden brown skin tone when she was on I think she was on there with Will at the time. Will, Will, Will Sobush was on there. She was on there with Will. 
or around that time on on Penny Big Brother. Then after she blew up, her skin skin whitened like crazy. She was brown. She was darker than me before. Now she's white. She's white like a Korean. And then Filipinos are, use it for still for Filipinos. Yeah, Filipino men do like that. That's true. Filipino men like that complexion. Foreigners don't, though. And Big Man 797 said, I remember going to Palau and Wapane. There were some Korean girls at the pool. Wapane could stop staring at them. Their complexions were cocaine. Yeah, they are, because they use those whitening products. Cocaine white, yep. Henry Man agree, a Filipina. For me, it has to be brown, not white. Southeast Asians are brown, not white. It's true. And Doanne said, my co-workers, my co-workers love my color, caramel. <laughs> no, people do love that complexion. Some of them, I think, take glue to your thing. Yeah. I'll always tell them I'm 100% natural woman, how I wish I had more brown tone. Yeah. John, yes, man, and to Casper, yep. And then so just go to SM, all the Philippines broken there, light skin. I know I was at. It's like, yeah, I know where I was or something. I was at SM today, right? I should have did a live stream there. No, no, I actually had a live stream tonight. I should have did a quick live. But um, I was there today, and I got I got a clip, though, so you guys can tell. You guys can tell from the clip. I got a clip where I was just standing there, and then people were walking by me. So in that clip, I when I edit it, I'm going to point out and see how many are using skin whiteners. So that's going to be a thing I'm going to do now. I'm going to go somewhere and say, okay, I'm going to stand still and say, guys, point out how many people that walk by me are wearing skin whiteners. And you guys can tell from their skin here. It may not be from here because you can't see it, but you can tell from their arms. And so I'm going to hold the camera and let people just walk by me. And you guys be able to tell me. Koreans are under a lot of pressure to be like bright white. Yeah, that's the thing in Korea. Korea, the pressure's on even more. But the Philippines adopted that same pressure. The Philippines is heavily influenced by Korea. Heavily influenced by Korea. Extremely influenced by Korea. That's the reason why they banned the SRRV for a while. It's back around now, but they banned it. They banned it because it wasn't because of like Americans or people from the UK or people from other places. Um, it was because of Koreans, Koreans and Chinese, right? Because all of the Koreans and Chinese were coming over here and doing the SRRB. Now, the reason why they're doing the SRRB is because when you do that, you can have a business and you can go into business. So they're doing that and they're leasing land or they're leasing buildings and they're starting to having businesses here, the Koreans and the Chinese. That's what they're doing. They've been doing it for years. So they come over here, they get their S S R R B, and then they can come in the country and out of the country whenever you want. That's what else I was going to talk about too, is that you guys need to start doing that too. You understand what I'm saying? So when you come here, because you never know if they close the Philippines down again. So when you come here, if this is a place that you've already made your mind, that you want to come back and forth to at any given time, which I know most of you guys have, work on getting your S R R B. You know, if you have, and it's, it's not cheap. If if you're a guy over fifty five and you have twenty thousand to just put it somewhere, put it off so you can get that, you can do that because that's what the uh, Koreans and the Chinese are doing, and they've been doing it for years. And they've come out, they come out to the Philippines and made it their country already, pretty much. You guys already know. Yeah, they're all over SMOs and stores. Yeah, with black hair. You know, Mike Jackson had a condition. Yeah. More than K-pop groups than just their skin color. They flip in the script. FTM, MTF, Chuck. And then uh, he said, Tony Anderson said, he remained easier for them to get roped there just as long as they aren't over 30, age 30. Yeah. That's the thing, too. When you um get the SRRV, you can come over here. And you're pretty much almost like the same thing I can do as a permanent resident. You can do. With your SRV. Yeah, she's trying to do SRV now. Yeah. And there's even people that are working it and can flip it in ways you can get it. They can they can doctorate it, I've heard. And you can get in here now. I don't know anybody like that. 
But if I find someone, actually, I know a guy at immigration. I got to talk to him and see if he can do it. And I'll let you guys know. I'll be open to let you guys know if I got that hookup. Because um, I know a guy that hooked me up on my immigration and helped me get my permanent resident. And guys like that are the same guys that are doing the SRV. So I, I'll talk to him and see what he says. And Mark Nunn said, I'm trying to do SRV now. You can get EED to enter now. If you complete, yep, an SRV application, yep. That's the thing. Mark Nunn is right. That's that, that's what I was going to talk about. That's what I was going to talk about. That was the other part of the live stream I was going to talk about. You guys probably seen it. In the bottom, I said, you know, retirement. And I was talking about the SRV. I was going to get into that. I was going to get into that. But no, it's true. What's going on, Simply Rocco? How you doing? But yeah, that's the thing, guys. You know, you had the, they've been doing it for years. Those are the ones that have it. Everybody in China and Korea is getting their SRV. They're saving up their money, getting their SRV so they can be in the country now. And I'm sure there's other guys that got it. Because when I'm out, like today even, when I was in MOA, tons of expats. They probably were already here, but some of them could have got their SRV. Like, see Mark Nunn here. He knows. I'm trying to do SRV now. You can get EED to enter now if you complete the SRV application. You just need to have a certain amount of money. That's the thing. Yeah, yep. And that's right. It's, it's right you said that, Mark. You said that's why I said um, I have a connection. I, I want to speak to him. And you said it, you said it right, Mark. Be careful. There are a lot of scammers popping up offering SRV services. I know somebody legit. I know somebody legit, so I'm going to speak to him and see what he says about it. And I use him for other services. So if he if he says, oh, I, I got somebody, I'll go with him on that and trust him. Because there are, you got to be careful. Mark Nunn said it. There are a lot of people that are going to scam fixers. It's a lot of fixers. But the same people that, that can do it now, I guess they're sort of a fixer too, but not in the same way. You have, you have the fixers that are just looking to rob and scam. And there's so many scam people trying to do scams in the Philippines. I'm definitely going to have Kay come on and talk about it because there's so many people that are trying to do scams in the Philippines, especially on YouTubers. It's like, it's ridiculous, guys. Like me and Kay get emails saying, oh, I need you to verify this and for your YouTube channel and People trying to scam you. SM have let me read Penny Forever what she said. SM have criteria when hiring their female per salespersons. They teach them how to put on their makeup, must have nice legs, certain weight, and of course fairer skin. So they use all whitening products. Oh man. Guys, Penny Forever is right. When I'm at SM, right? We speak to the people all over the place, right? We speak to them all over the place. And SM, not only that, Panay Forever, they don't keep the same employees in there. So you see employees you see in there, you have a couple that make it through the years, but they just recycle them. They just in and out, in and out. They do that with their employees. Also, exactly like Panay Forever said, they have to be a certain height, certain weight. They all have their hair in a the bun. They'll have to make up the same exact way. Like, they all look like the same person. It's wild. The guy's a little different. But the girls all, they all have, like, a certain weight. They're different heights, though. They're different heights. But still, they're never really, like, they're, they're, they're taller. The girls that work in SM, you won't find a girl that's, like, four something. They have to be, like, 5'2". It's wild. 5'2", five 5'3", five up to 5'6". It's, like, 5'2", to 5'6". Or even, I'm sure it could be taller. But I've seen some taller than that. But still, I never really seen a real, real short girl working at SM. You know, and um, a certain height, certain weight, certain. Yep, so true. Skin, they're all very white. All of them are white. And it, yeah, Mike, you might got vitiligo. That's right. Yeah, Mike had a skin condition. But um. Yeah, it's true, man, and it's sad because that happens a lot in the Philippines. In order to get a job, 
that's one of the criterias here. That's one of the criteria. You know, I'm, I, I I never made a video on it, guys. <laughs> I'm surprised. I talk about everything. I talk about everything, but I never made a video on that. But you do. You have to fit a certain criteria in order to work in the Philippines. You know, not so much for the guys, though. But for the girls, the reason why is because the girls, they usually do the ones in the front of the store. They're in the register. So when you go to NESM, right, the first thing you see, you guys you guys already know. If you've ever been here and you've been in the SM, the first thing you see is the, is the cashiers before you enter the store. That's the first thing you see is the cashiers right there. They have it set up the same way. It's like the cashiers are the first line of defense, the first thing you see. So you see them, they're all uniform. They're all uniform. And that's one of the criteria is to work in the Philippines in certain places. You know, same thing in um, in places like Ruston. Same places in any supermarket, except for me, maybe in a province. But any supermarket you're gonna be in a major city, yeah, it's all uniform. Some complexion, yeah. That tells you that the white influence of racism in the Philippines. I don't, I don't think it's um white influence of racism. I, it is white influence though. It is, but I don't. I guess it is somewhat. It is racism. It's weird. It's like a thin line. But the Philippines is racist in that way. They don't. It's not racist to the Filipino, and it's not because it's pushed on them. But from that, you know, it's pushed on them from that. The colorism, and they they, they usually put it on each other. Like they wouldn't look at a black person. I, well, they would. They would. I got to tell you guys what happened too. I got to tell you what happened. You guys remember when I went to the furniture store, right? I don't know if you guys remember. You probably don't remember that vlog. I went to the furniture store, and I did a vlog. All the all the furniture was expensive, right? So it was uh, um actually ladies were there, the foreigner. Now one of them said no because one of them said no because she was uh she was married, right? She said no, no, I wasn't I'm married. I said okay, I got it. The other one said, oh yes, sir, yes, right? And there was a third girl that I didn't show on the camera that I couldn't show. The reason why I didn't show her, everybody here would have ripped her to shreds. I'll tell you guys what she said to me. This is what she said. She said, yes, I would date a foreigner, not black, huh? And <laughs> that's what she said. She said, yes, I would date a foreigner, not black. And I said, mm, wow. Now, there are a lot of Filipinas here. Not a lot, not a big a big bulk, but there are a lot of them, yeah. That, because of skin color mostly, not because you're black. Not because you're black, mostly because of skin color. They wouldn't date a black man. And it's sad. There are a lot that will, though. There are a lot that will. They were allowed to actually look forward to it. You guys see the videos of the one, that, the ones that will, and you gotta overlook those. But some Filipinos, it's mostly because they worship the white skin. It's not even the fact that it's the white man; it's the white skin. You know, it is. It's the white skin. But it's it's not to be shocked about, Roy Jones. Think about it. Think about it. They're using whitening products. It's it's sad. It is. It is very sad. Yep, and, and so um, exotic Filipina said it. Sometimes they only consider foreigner as white. If Asian and black sk color skin, it's not. That's true because you have a lot of people that's black that's here. Yep. There's there's black people that live here. There's black Filipinos out here. There's this there, in every 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 area they got black Filipinos. So they don't really look. They don't look at black people as like. Like, for instance, a white foreigner would be a victim more than a black foreigner. A white foreigner would be more of a victim than a black foreigner because the Filipino would relate more to the black foreigner. That's just facts. Like, so the white man would get chosen faster, but the black man would get accepted faster. It's wild. It's just like that. It's just like that. This is how it is. 
well, when I was there, I came across a lot of Filipinos that love black men, especially when you got money. Well, no, most Filipinos, it's a lot of Filipinos that love black men, but there's some, but there's some because of uh, preference of complexion that won't date, you know? It's sad. I've had Filipinos say they only reason they would date me because I was light. But if I was darker, they, they and when I say I'm a black guy, they surprise. They surprise. Like they they, they don't really think there's light skinned black people. <laughs> it's wild, guys. I'm, t- I'm telling you no lies. They go, no, you Filipino, no, you Filipino. And I'm go, no, there's light skin. I've just no, there's light skinned black people. They think black people only can be black. It's wild. Like there's some Filip- a lot of Filipinos that don't know. They really don't know. They say, yeah, I know a streamer who's black. And Filipino expresses racism all the time. Yeah, of course. It's just like that. Others are even being injected. Gluteal thing. I didn't know you can get injected. That's wild. So their body to get wider. That's wild. I got to post that. Others are even injected to their body to get wider. That's crazy. But I believe it. I won't, I won't put it past nothing. And think about all other all of the actors, musicians, and pageant winners, all light skinned, yeah, because they're all mixed with white. All of their um, yep, it's true. That's that's why that's what makes them worship the white man more. Because those are the ones, those are the Filipinos that are all the pageant winners, are usually mixed with white. They're the pageant winners. They're the um, yep. They're the actors, the musicians. Yep, that's why. So they see that, and it's and Carl Bone said it. There are tons of Africans in Manila. They do keep to themselves. Actually, right over passing where I live in the buildings over there, African city. You can walk right over to that building, and go in there, right, and you see them sometimes by the market. You catch Africans walking around. Like for instance, and I was over walking up by the bridge, like on yesterday actually. You know, because it was sad if I was walking over there by the bridge. African guy walks right by me. Whoop. I'm like, oh. And it's funny because some of the African guys here, right? They're like listening to hip hop. So he's walking with the swag like, like he's from New York. And I'm sitting there like, oh man. <laughs> Not j- judging him, but I'm like, oh wow. Like, you know, he's African dude. They go to school out here. A lot of Africans go to school here. Especially the younger ones. I've seen a ton, it's a ton of them in uh, Pasai over there by the Makati area, but really a lot in Pasai. Even went to my church, a lot of them uh, in my church. Tons of Africans in my church. Actually, a lot of the kids that go to the college there, because in Adventist College in, the, in church, they actually sing in the church. So the choir is like 25% Africans. No lies, guys. Like, like Filipinos, maybe a couple of white people sprinkling in there, and then the rest is Africans. My, the choir at my church. And they actually, some of them are pastors. It's wild. But no, over there, that's why I kind of like it over there in that church. Because, you know, you speak with them and like, and they're cool too. Very involved. Africans are very involved in Filipino culture. You know, you go in like places in certain areas in Manila, they actually own businesses and clubs. Yeah, guys, Africans. Africans actually are part of every culture. They've done the same thing that blacks in America need to get up on. That's why I think some of you guys will need to get your SRV and come out here and, and, and enterprise. Well, actually, we're coming into a day and age where you can't. But, you know. If you see this is a place that you want to uh, be at, then I would definitely consider that. Celebrities that get free treatment. Let me see here. A dark chocolate black man. I find this discussion eye opening. Let me see. Christian Contreras. With Philippine, with Filipinas, it's more about what you bring to their table. They want to leave the country. That's, that could be true, too. And a lot of times what happens is, and you're right, they want you, they want to leave the country. That's true. And you have to be, be aware of those Filipinas. Okay. Okay. 
Bring me a whole water, water bottle. Yeah, you do. I'm thirsty. Yeah, you guys got to watch out for those. I wouldn't worry about that. I don't want to get into that discussion, but yeah, some some do want you to leave the country, but you got to avoid those. And because a lot of you guys looking to come here and be here, not looking to leave. I used to sew those and took these as well. Yeah, and exotic Filipina is the perfect example of what the guy's looking for. Exotic Filipino. And she said it. She said she just started getting accepted in the Philippines for her complexion. But her but her uh but her complexion is what the foreigners are looking for. That tan brown. Like she's almost she's browner than she's darker than me, actually. And I, I'm I'm tan. She's like Dark like gold. She's golden brown. She's actually golden. Exotic Filipinas is what what guys are looking for in the Filipinas. So if any Filipinas watching this, that's what guys are going for. That complexion, exotic Filipina. It could be a little bit lighter, but mostly that complexion. Because that's that's the Fili that's the heart. That's the Filipino heart right there. Complexion, you know, that that golden brown bent in the sun. Complexion. And Eric Johnson said Filipinos, Filipinos act that way here in the States as well. So let me see here. Chocolate is black. Let me see. Symbiacus in, in, in the building. How you doing? Also, let me see. Name is Bond. James Bond. Nappy hair don't lie, my brother. Panay's know a brother when they see one. Did Panay's think Barack Obama wasn't a brother? I didn't talk to them about, about that. I don't get into politics with people out here. But you know what? If 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 a Filipino, some the Filipinos that know, no. Like you got some Filipinos that are very cultured, that understand cultures understand certain things they usually go older they usually at least like over 25 but you need got some even so that's that age that wouldn't know you know they wouldn't they would look at barack obama and say he's not he's not a black man seriously no lie james bond i'm not lying to you k knows k knows what i'm talking about some people just they they wouldn't like they would always say like they would they would look at me and they hear me talk in English, and then they would say, "Like, is he from Africa?" They thought I was African more so than black. I didn't, it was bugged out. And uh, thanks for the simple super chat. Super simply Rocco says, "Gotta run. See you all later." Love you, J and K. Thanks a lot for the super chat, brother. But um, yeah, uh, Obama. I wouldn't be surprised. I don't know for sure about that, James. But I'm sure there was Filipinos that probably thought he wasn't black. And then uh, let me see, K. Reeves said, "I believe it. I have so many Ghanaian friends who live in the Philippines." Yeah, no, it's true. It was um, they're from everywhere too. Was, I've seen Africans from Ethiopia, and the Africans from Ethiopia is like a little bit darker than me. You got, you know, Ethiopia. You have a lot of light skinned light -skin blacks in Ethiopia. I've seen them in. Uh, in Passai, guys, at the college over there, like the Africans come here and they go to the top colleges. Like, like guys, I was over there by the college and I was walking around on the, um, this was like three years ago. I was walking around over there at night and it was like, man, tons of Africans were going to the school and they were embedded in the school. It was Africans and Filipinos. You've seen people from other places. It was like all over the world mixed in. Like the Philippines, a little bit of melting pot. It is. And uh, thanks for the super chat, Mark Nunn. Thank you. Now, nah, Vicky, will is good with me. Thanks for the super chat, Mark Nunn. Also, Simply Rocco. Thanks a lot for that. And Big Man 797 said it, and I'm, I, I, I do too, man. He said, I miss getting a, met a pedicure and a manicure in the fields for $3. Yeah, I miss it somewhat, but I'm not gonna. I'm gonna miss it more, 
when things start to change when things make a big change i'm gonna miss it more but actually i'm not gonna miss it but it's time to get busy we had a time in earth's history where you know things are getting serious okay i'm out i'm out well, god bless you all see you later see you later henry see you later man and it, exactly flipping it says some are open-minded but most are not i think or maybe because of the neighborhood how they grow and all that no it's true um it depends on how they grow it depends on how cultured you are but then you have to think too some filipinos are not cultured at all they never ever experience other people especially in a province so that, that has a lot to do with it you know if you've done if you've done with a filipino in a province has never seen other people some filipinos have never seen foreigners so when they see foreigners they're like oh they're so shocked and even in the area i am you know you don't see too many foreigners over here by my side of the block you don't see you go up the block more that's where they all are but you don't see too many here but yeah guys so Eric Johnson, what do you mean Filipinos act that way? Please be specific. All right, no, 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 no fights in here. There's a lot of misinformation online about getting to the Philippines. Haven't seen my girl in two years. Well, no, um, Mark Nunn, it's not a misinformation, actually. People are thanks a lot for the super chat, big man seven hour seven. Have you some durian, Jay? I hate durian, man. But no, um, there are people that are getting in with the with the SSRV. That's what I was going to talk about too. Big um, that was who was it? It wasn't. I forgot who it was. It was uh, because Big Man Seven Nine One Seven messed me up. Oh, Eric Johnson. Oh, Eric Johnson. There are a lot of people that may be getting in from the SRV. That's why I talked about it. <clears throat> and I want to I want to make that aware. Where do you guys? And I forgot when you guys brought up Koreans. Actually, we talking about the skin whiteners. And then that led into the SRV because they're the ones, them and the Chinese are the ones using the SRV the most. That's why they banned it. They banned it last year in October because there was a lot of people coming in from China on SRV. And those are the people that started this pandemic. So Philippines were like, oh, yeah, you definitely got to stop that for now. So they stopped it. Then they bought it back. I think, what, three months ago, four months ago, they bought it back maybe five i think five four or five months ago they brought it back so if mark figures out how to get here i'm sure he's going to contact me saying jay i'm here but the thing is you gotta you gotta have money and you gotta make sure you're not being scammed also too um like what's the name uh what's his name superman boss kirk tv right he has a kid here so he can definitely come in. And, and Mark Nunn said that too. He's so right. If you have a kid in the Philippines, you can come to the Philippines. And he didn't know that. He didn't know it, right? And because I, I reported it and I said, Super Boss Kirk, I, he watches me. But I'm like, but sometimes that's where you got to watch everything because, you know, it'll be something in there that's important that you may miss. I'm going to start posting my old videos in the community again. So to be in you guys' face, you say, oh, wow, I missed that. Because it'd be something like that that you missed. And Super Boss Kirk, Boss Kirk could have been in TV, could have been in the Philippines last year. He could have been in the Philippines. Last year, he could have been here, you know, like right around before I left, he could have came. I think in, yeah, two thousand early, not early, but like probably... Like it runs alive, he could have came. Pandemic started in March. When things slowed down a little bit, he could have came right in the Philippines. 95% of my people are black and only flew. Only a few trying to be something they are not. To be it, they by injecting to be it. Yep. It's so true, man. And it's never going to stop. It's never going to stop. But simply act is the same thing is happening like in places like Jamaica. 
and these are people in Jamaica doing it. That's sh- like black, black, like it's not like Philippines, like sometimes a little brown. You have some that are dark, but they're doing it in Jamaica, and this is great. It looks even worse there because you see a person that was like real, real dark, and they look like lighter than me. You know, they they that it gets you light, like so light. And you see people in Jamaica looking lighter than me. It looks weird. It looks like the skin, like they're not real, like they got a infectious disease. It's wild. If you are fully vaccinated, can you get into the Philippines? No, not at all. Not yet. Getting close, though. Mr. Lee, that's why I started doing the reports on it again. Thanks for the super chat, Big Man 7917. But um, that's why I started reporting on it again, Mr. Lee. I started reporting on it again because the Philippines is getting closer to opening. Think about it, guys. It's already it's already October. It's flying. And when I talked about it before, it was well, like around March. Like time is flying. And I said it then. I said, guys, it's gonna fly by. Watch. And hasn't it flew by? Time has flew by. Think about it, guys. It went from March when I first saw Tom making videos on it until now. And so let me see. G. Parker said, hey, Jay, when do you think they'll begin to process illegal immigrants instead of illegal immigrants? Um, I'm not sure what you mean necessarily by that. You know, I think they will start to process the legal immigrants. I'm a little confused. I don't know exactly what you're talking about. You got to rephrase the question a little bit. Mr. Lee, I'm thinking... I'm thinking, uh, I'm thinking March, June, at this point, even if it was, even if it was a little after that, say if it was July, right? That's still only what, say March is five months, June is eight months, you know, July is nine months, that will fly by too, so... But I, that's why I wanted to start reporting on it again. I want to report everything happening. Yeah, that clip said it. Yeah, time is flying. It is flying. And um, should be honest, I think it's sad when they go through the identity crisis. No, it is sad. It is sad, and that's why. And it's crazy. That's why I did. <laughs> Actually, I'm not going to talk about it because I get into it. I get into it in in, in, in a video actually that I got coming. I think. I don't know. I'm thinking if I should pick that video up first. I think I may, I probably should put that video about racism in the Philippines. I talk about it. I made a video about this a while ago. Not, not a while ago, maybe like two weeks ago, three weeks ago. I made a video about it. And um, actually, what's the name? Panay Forever and also Dewan cooperated in that video too. I don't know. Was it, was it them? Oh, no. I don't think it was them. I think it was Abigail. Yeah, it was Abigail and Kay. But yeah, so yeah, we talked about Filipino racism. We went in deep. Jay, I remember when we were online last year in November talking about the Philippines reopening. Yeah. And I said it, man. I said it. And then now. Well, no, we're saying, we're saying after elections. And you know what's funny? And Mark, you said it. I think it's going to, it's no, Scott, it, it's going to fully open soon, sooner than you guys think. And the reason why I think it's going to be after elections, because the president, they're going to get into office. They're probably going to be, you know, pushing that saying, you know, I'm going to get the Philippines open. You know, guys are going to be saying that, you know, if I'm president, I'm going to get it open. And so when the pre- if that person's elected president, they're going to work on getting it open. That's what's going to happen. They're working on getting it open. And, all, and what they, see, this is the thing. This this is my countdown, guys. And and you, I'm sure you guys will understand. It makes sense. You see how they're lowering 
they keep lowering the days for quarantine. First it was seven days. Then they put it down to five days. Guys, watch. In a month, they're going to say, oh, three days. Then phone is going to start saying, hold up, three days. That sound good. Um, I, I don't think it'd be unvaxxed, Scott, but we don't know. Who knows? Yeah, she didn't even know I put her in. <laughs> Hi, guys. Yeah. What's going on? So you're still talking about the topic? Yeah, actually, Kay, I I can need you to talk about this. Okay. Because you was in Thailand, right? Mm -hmm. Um, talk about the difference between Thailand and the because I the reason why I feel the Philippines is the way it is because I was there and I felt what you already knew for years, right? Mm -hmm. How people in Thailand. And Philippines are like night and day. That's what makes Thailand a better. That's I mean, Philippines a better destination to me because the people are real. And I took mm -hmm. so Kate talk about well, you you talk about how your experiences in Thailand and what you can say about it. Well, Thai people are okay, but sometimes they actually shy to. For example, they have complained for yeah. for their boss. They're actually shy to open up. And they, they just talk about it behind the behind the ano to? behind the, the boss back like behind her back and but I also meet we also I also meet some good uh, Thai Thai parents that when I was a teacher there there's also some good Thai parents but I noticed that uh, they are really they actually cannot because Filipinos are very proud they're gonna tell you in a nice way or in a bad way whatever. But then are, they're really like, if you say something, I'm echoing. I don't know. Uh, let me close my door. You want me to yeah, yeah. Over? No, it, what I'm trying to say is the difference is like Filipino are more open. When they they want to say something, they're going to say it. But them, if they're going to say, uh, if they're going to be prank, it's like they don't like to hurt other people. But instead of hurting other people, they're just going to talk behind their back, you know? <laughs> So, and also they like a foreigner. They're like farang, farang. Oh, there's a farang. You know, mm -hmm. they like they really like foreigner because there's a bunch. There are more. You get my headset. Yeah, I know. Sorry, guys. I feel like um, we're echoing. Like there's a lot of words coming out. So the difference, I think, is Filipino are more prone. Filipino are more direct, whatever they feel. And if they think that things is not doing the right way, like if the boss is not treating them well, they're going to tell to the boss. But there, they're like more, oh, they're not going to, you know, they keep it to themselves, but they just backfight. At the back of the boss, they're over, you know, this, this would happen in the school when I was teaching before. But I also hear some from some of my friends that some Thai is like this, like that. You need to be careful. That's why when I was working there, I never had any Thai students or Thai parents that added me. But after I left the school, I accept their friend request. So they're all they're nice. The, the, the parents were nice to me. They're very nice. But um, oh, I think everywhere in the world, there's always like someone that not really good and there's always like really good it's i think it's everywhere but mm -hmm. i think when it comes to attitude i like the attitude of filipinos not because i'm filipino okay <laughs> but when it comes to economy when it comes to technology when it comes to um what do you call like the the thailand is thailand. more it's more improved compared to yeah of course to the philippines the infrastructure yeah. and everything yeah. That's why there are a bunch of foreigners in Thailand compared to the Philippines because a bunch, obviously, yeah. a bunch of foreigners there, right, Jay? When we were there, and when I was working there, yeah. I see a lot of foreigners working it's, there. It's like when I was when I was in Thailand, yeah, working it. When I was in Thailand, I felt like I seen just as much foreigners as Thai people, if not mm -hmm. more. Sometimes, seriously, guys, I was out there and I was like, man, it feels like I'm in New York. It was wild, and um. But no, and what Kay's saying, 
she she is like is telling on a bigger level of how it was fake. And, I who. and I'm I'm I seen it from you know the way people were. It was it was it was fake. It was a very it was dip like night and day from the Philippines. And, and also mm-hmm. yeah, go ahead, Jay. No, oh, it's actually go. when we borrowed a um, motorcycle there, it's like it's really hard because we we don't really I don't fluently speak uh, Thai, so they're really like upset with us and then, like mm-hmm. they charge us too much and it's like it's really hard to maybe because I'm not Thai I don't speak Thai, uh, I speak a little bit only, but it's like I think because we're, we're I'm from the Philippines so I'm home but the way they treat the person sometimes is not really good. That's what mm-hmm. we experience when we are traveling. But some other experience, I have a lot of good experience with other Thai people, uh, a lot. But, you know, as, as your other viewer said here, that they're always like bad apple. <laughs> sometimes yeah. you experience it and you, you know. Mm-hmm. I want to be like yeah. you, Jay, you know? <laughs> How like me? Oh, you stupid. <laughs> Shout out to Mike, to Clip and Rue, uh, Simply Akus. Big man is keep asking you a question. He give you super chat. He said, "Jay, do you do you know how to do tinikling? Because you have tinikling at your back, Jay, at the back over there on your right side. That's oh, tinikling. Oh, yeah. Tinikling is one of the national oh, okay. dance in the Philippines. Tinikling is when you stand up and you step on the wood like this. That's why he keep asking mm-hmm. you that. Do you dance tinikling? Do you know how to oh, do okay. tinikling? <laughs> Big man, he doesn't know. Oh. I'll answer it for you. <laughs> no. I thought it was I thought it was something perverted." <laughs> I'm, like, I'm, not, I'm not answering that. I thought it, that's what I thought it was. Big man, I thought it was something crazy. I'm like tinkling, like, like I thought it was like ting ting or something like that. Like ting ting, ting ting. ting. <laughs> Big man, you need to explain yourself when you ask question because he doesn't know tinikling yet, and he didn't. Yeah, we're yeah. not on that lesson yet. I, it's gonna be far like, from our lesson. I'm thinking ting ting, you know. Joe jo Quay said to, to my son, like, yeah, mom told my mom ting ting. He said, my son walked around and went, ah, ting ting, ah, ting ting. You know, and I'm like, uh, yeah, I don't want to answer. <laughs> ting ting. That's our big question, but you didn't answer my question. I was, I was guys in the back. Uh, I was, um, um approving some of the comments because some comment was being held for review by youtube i don't know why but when mm-hmm. you mentioned some words i don't know especially in the chat youtube was held for review so i was approving it mm-hmm. jay I remember when you were online last year november talking about the philippines we opening for michael love to travel where, yeah. where are you right now in the i know in the question brooklyn told said don't they have access to the internet how could you how could they be so naive well yeah answer this you want to answer this what happened? What was it? Brooklyn Toll said, do they have access to the internet? How could they be so naive? Well, believe it or not, some, a lot of people don't. There is a lot of people, Seriously? especially in the province. The signal yeah. is very low, guys. When you travel mm-hmm. just to have a vacation and you yeah. go to a nice place, nice beach, but the signal is horrible, you will know mm-hmm. that people there doesn't really know what's going on because they doesn't have yeah. connection and they doesn't have cell phones sometimes, so yeah. they're really like they doesn't have electricity. So it's really it's really um, hard on different part of the Philippines where electricity is not yeah. available, uh, internet is not available. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did you pee already? Ah, oh, okay. They need to get open oh, anyway. Sure. It's good for it's the economy. And, um, hi, hi, Mike. Yeah, it's, it's it's just like that. It's like that all over the world, though. But there are in, in the Philippines, there's some areas that are just so far off that they don't have any kind of good connection, mm-hmm. and they're just lost, and they're just out there, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but, just living. And uh huh. No, 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 big man, give you another super chat. Thank you, big man, for the super chat again. Tinikling. Yes, thanks a lot, brother. Can you can, can you read that, Jay? <laughs> oh wait, wait a second. I'm getting it's something here. Click the green thing, green thingy. No, no, no I'm, I'm on something else. That's why. Ah, okay. Hi, oh, Tony. Yeah, uh, so, technically, the bamboo dance, ethnic Filipinos dance, very hard to master. Man, I'm not doing no dances, bro. I don't, <laughs> I don't dance. Well, it's not in my, uh, 
I just I'm not I don't dance. You know, dance. He, he, he danced before. He danced before. Not anymore. I used to dance before, but I don't dance anymore. Yeah. I don't dance. I, think I, don't, I, do uh, I don't listen to, to to the worldly music. I know it sounds crazy. I know I seem like a guy that that still does, but I'm not involved in stuff anymore. No more worldly music. No dancing. None of that. So, um, Filipino style, they need to reopen anyway. Let me just see some other comments. Tony Anderson said they need to allow more airlines passenger to fly on the daily rate. Right now, it's only 2000 a day. Oh, I don't know that. And, and Moreau Smith, he said, I would think the love you get in the Philippines we both the culture and maybe the money in the end. Yeah, no, it's both. It is both. It is both. I explained it. I explained it earlier. What happened was I wanted to wait, but I don't want to wait until an hour to mm -hmm. get into explaining it. So um, I explained it. I explained it earlier. Like as soon as I came in, because when I came in, right, I was pressured because when you come in, it's only like six people in here, seven people. And, <laughs> and like, I got to explain it. What I got to start doing is like playing a slow music for like, I'll do that for like 20, 20, not 20 minutes, maybe five minutes, play music or something. Mm -hmm. So by the time I come in, you know, it's at least 20 people here because that happened earlier. And I was like, I'm giving away everything and not everybody's not here yet. So yeah. guys come late, guys. Just kidding. It's stupid. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> Let me see the yeah. other. Um, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, no, I'm done. done. Mark Nan said there's no court in for fully boxed to entertain now, but do your research. You read this already? Yeah. Well, how far are you up? No. Um, a little bit up, like around the part where I was reading earlier about Naib. I think, yeah, I think I, I, I read about the opening of Thailand, but I'm not sure about the quarantine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, we made seven hours, seven star. I love the show goes. Two star hotel chain with five star quality features in the Philippines. Oh, yeah, the show goes. Yeah. I've actually, I never stayed at one before, believe it or not. I think me and Kim have to travel to those. We see no, them all the time. When you're in the yeah. Philippines, you if you're in Manila, you're gonna pass the Sogo. You're gonna pass at least five of them on your way home. But only and, thing Sogo is popular with turning left, you know, when you have your girl, you you yeah. meet a girl. Hey girl, <laughs> yeah, girl. Sogo. Yeah. yeah. That's popular. That's why Sogo is popular with that big man seven nine one seven. Yeah, seven nine seven is probably doing it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what he said, I'm, I'm doing the Luxor Hotel. <laughs> Thank you for the super chat, big man. Yeah, thanks a lot, uh, brother. We appreciate it. Hello, Mike. You love to travel. Hello, Simply Akos. And then we have here, I think you will see domestic travel pick up first. Actually, yeah, Clip and Rue, yeah. the domestic travel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Actually, right now, the, after the announcement about the five days quarantine, they also announced that below 18 years old and above 65 years old can now travel to to do the you know uh interzonal travel something like that like traveling from other gcq to mgcq you can travel now so a lot of people yeah. is traveling we go back to the province right okay now. we need to go back to the hmm? province we need yeah, to go we travel check, back to the province yeah. we will check what are the requirements to our to my province so we can visit yeah, we there go. uh yeah. Jane, to ASAP. see our land as well we so go we can there. see what we can do oh god it's of utmost importance that we get out there <gasps> Oi, Ru, happy birthday. Tell Ru, happy, happy birthday. Oh, yeah, happy birthday, Ru. Today. How old is she? Like 26 or 25? I'm not sure. I think she's around that, that I don't know, 26, 25, or 27. I think 26. Or maybe 24. I'm not sure. <laughs> but happy birthday. Who said do open mic for the first 20 minutes? What do you mean open mic? Like open mic, like have people come on and sing? The open do an open mic for the first 20 minutes, Jay. Oh, oh, I know what you're saying. I think I know what you're saying. Or like, open um, mic. Open mic, like, put, put my what's your name on. I think I did it before. I did it earlier. When I had you guys come to the live, I had the music uh, on. No, I also, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to find some music now. that's... Yeah. I'm trying to find some music to um play. Not, not, you know, something like some pianos, like real gentle music, you know. Make, make you guys take a nap when you come, you know. <laughs> make it boring, you know. <laughs> if, if I, that's the thing, I don't think. I think that would be too soon. But I won't be surprised. I won't be surprised at that. If the Philippines is open in January, I wouldn't be surprised at all. 
I'd be happy for you guys because I'm already here. I'd be happy for you guys. But I won't be surprised at all. And also, let me see here. They got the high birthday rule, but rule is sleeping. So oh, Mike, it's love to travel. Also, Hello, happy birthday, Jane Gales, everyone. Hey, Monroe. Yeah. D but, Parker, um, hello. J -J. K, see, that's what happened. K coming in on late saying hello to people that have been here for, for like a half hour. <laughs> no, because yeah, I was reading Parker, the comments. Hello. No, I was reading the comments. That's like, what I'm saying. Hello. Like, he's been here for like, for like five years, K. Hi, guys. Tomorrow on Sunday, I'm going to say D hello to you all. <laughs> D Parker, D Parker came in. He's a three's old man. Now, tomorrow. <laughs> hello, D Parker. Huh? <laughs> 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 D Parker say, "Hey K, how did you, how did Jay do on his Filipino exam last week? He did horrible. Oh yeah, yeah, I didn't do that good. But no, I got a. No, I'm not gonna play no Christian rock. Oh man, whoa, <laughs> whoa, no, that's not. No, you know it's crazy." I gotta, I gotta talk about that. By Eric Johnson. I gotta talk about this, Roy Jones. You know what's crazy? When I was trying to find the word, right? When I was looking for the real word, and I didn't want music or nothing like that, I went to a church, and they was playing Christian rock. They played Christian rock, brother. Let me tell you what I did, Roy Jones. I turned around, walked right out of the church, and I said, "I want the word. I want the word of God. I don't want this rock. I don't want music." And then from there. That's when I found the truth. But anyway, 27 is she sleeping? Open chat. Oh, I mean, okay. 27. Okay. What's up, professor? And Kay Dallas also said, Happy birthday, Rue. Happy birthday. Yeah, I know. I heard she was like, It's either 20, go, going to 26 or going to 27. So I'm not too sure. But yeah. yeah. Happy, happy birthday. She sleeps so early. Well, anyway, oh, I think she used to. She becoming a Filipino. She's on, she's not an atag. What do you call that? She's oh, not, yeah. The, um, she used to she Filipino lag. time now. Jet no lag. jet lag yeah. no more for her. <laughs> the thing, the thing, this is the crazy thing, guys. When I went to the States, I didn't catch jet, jet lag. I'll tell you why. <clears throat> I already stay up all night anyway. Right, kid? I'm already. <clears throat> now, this is the thing. Big man 7917. I have. But let me tell you the kind I had. Because Laing, they make a lot of Laing with pork, right? I've had the. um. Laing made without nothing in it. And also I've had Laing made with fish in it. And it was delicious. They actually make one at um, Jerry's Grill that doesn't have pork in it. <clears throat> so it got God to suggest anybody try that. But still, people in the pH sleep early, yeah. Yeah, only thing the, the, the fish that Jay's like is the dried fish, guys. It's a little bit salty, so we don't eat dried fish no more. Yeah, I, mean, no more. Um, I really miss dried fish, but it's really salty. <laughs> but that's mm. one of my favorite. I love to eat just rice and dried fish, and I'm good. <laughs> yeah. Novotel is my place to stay at, Tony from Tony Anderson. D. Parker is not late today, huh? I'm the one late. <laughs> Where's that? Where's Tony Anderson? Where's On the that? very top. Uh, I don't know. Like yesterday. Well, you didn't read that yet, Jay. Oh, hi. <laughs> you didn't read it yet. When it, uh, no, so I can show it. So I can post it. All right. You need to go up a little bit. I, I don't like to move my I know, my chat here because I will I will be missing it. Oh, I, I got it. Novotel is my place to stay at. I got it. I got it. Yeah. Novotel. So. Mikey, love to travel. Jay and K, I would, I would bet by January the Philippines will be open. I hope. I hope, Mike, because... What's happening is they, they're making it shorter and shorter, and also the most of the most of the uh, people in Manila is almost vaccinated. Like yeah. they said, by December it will be not fully, not everyone, not hundred percent in Manila, but it may be like hitting eighty or eighty-five. So they may be opening it soon, but hopefully by January. So you guys, if you wanna visit, you can visit right away. But, you know, expect if there's still a quarantine, just prepare extra, you know. In the video that Jay uploaded, we, we uploaded some uh, hotel quarantine there. You can check the prices and how it looks like. And you can also do your research. You can just search uh, in Agoda Quarantine Hotel. It will give you the result, agoda.com or booking.com. Mm -hmm. Hi, Abigail. Abigail is here. Hi, Deborah Vezor. 
Yeah, but um, but that's the thing. Okay, no more comments because uh, it's killing the show. And so, Jay, did you get a PH driver's license check? Is it difficult to deal with the LTO? Well, actually, I'm waiting for my um, I'm waiting for my uh, my permanent residence to clear, and then from there, I'm gonna go get my Philippines driver's license ASAP, and then I'm gonna start doing car videos so you guys will see it. You know, you guys will see me driving around, traveling to the province, stuff like that. Because I've never, you know, showed those videos as no car. So I'm going to do that. I'm not going to have a car. I'm going to rent one for a little while. And I'm going to do some driving around, you know, show myself going around different places. And then at that time, you're going to see an increase in content. So the content is going to increase tenfold. And it's going to get crazy. So guys, stay tuned. It's about to get nuts. But, um, <clears throat> you know, still... I'm also going to, I want to do more content going around because you guys know, like years ago, I made a lot of content going around Manila's Manila. I'm going to start doing my video. Actually, I'm not going to talk about what I'm going to start doing videos. I'm just going to do it. How about that? But it's, I still <laughs> want to make more content going around, uh, going around again. So you're going to see a lot more of that. I'm going to show you guys the Philippines, you know, we can, what you say, okay? No, the uh, big man gave us a super chat. Thank you, big man, for yeah, the thanks, super thanks chat. Super Have you had Dinuguan? Let me go down. Let me, let me post that. What is, do you know what's Dinuguan? Dinuguan. Oh, no, that, I'm reading the lying one. No, it's Just, not. Another Philippine dish is Dinuguan. vomiting. No, no, <laughs> never had that. Din, I'm not gonna, Dinuguan uh, is made of blood. Of blood, ghost blood, right? Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. It, it's not ghost blood. I think. I don't know, is it we, I don't eat dinuguan actually, guys. So because with Adventists we don't eat dinuguan. I don't know if it dinuguan is made of chicken blood or the pork blood or the beef yeah, blood. No. I'm not sure. No so dinuguan, we don't... No, uh what's the other one? I tried it before, but I would never Happy eat it blood. again. Okay. Yeah. We don't oh. eat uh pork, oh. we don't eat pork oh. big man. Big blood. <laughs> oh man, I'm not trying to die. Oh, that's one of the Filipino. Oh. They like that. Some of the hey. Filipinos. Man, you can have worms in your brain, all that kind of stuff. Pig blood. Oh, that's the worst animal to eat. That animal to eat anything. So you're eating anything. Oh no. Pig blood and no, coconut milk. <laughs> no pork on my fork. Pig blood and coconut milk to stay over there. Uh uh. Mm mm. No 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 no. I'll pass. No, like, see, that's the thing, guys. A lot of this food here, like, I'm telling you guys, do not adopt the Filipino diet. Please do not adopt it. Don't get caught up in the in the tradition of the Philippines because you would get caught up in the tradition of death. And Kay knows what I'm talking about. And, and say, I almost ordered one day off DoorDash. Yeah. Man, do not get caught up in the Filipino diet. Don't come out here saying, I want to try this and I'm going to try that. No. Cause you get caught up and stuck eating that and you end up liking it and then you know you're killing yourself slowly I, and i'm not but, trying to bash the philippines by saying but I'm, there's I'm a lot broke. of there's also there, it's not only that there's also a lot of good filipino dish so you just need to choose which one well, you think is you know, healthy philippines, you know philippines has a lot of veggie dishes like I a lot okay when k gave me long cut I said, Kay, no what is this? I said, Kay, what is this? Is this chicken? What is it, Kay? What's Lanka? What's Lanka? It's made of... I know what to I forgot. The, um, banana blossom. Banana blossom. Lanka, Lanka is Lanka. Banana blossom. Banana Lanka blossom. Is, no, it's not, Jay. Banana blossom is different. The I'm lanka is made, the, that's the fruit lanka. It's the uh, actual fruit is lanka, uh, jackfruit. Oh, okay, jackfruit. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you, you, no, this, you made me go little, to K Google, made it like I Google it. Actually, Kay, you gotta, um, I want some mm -hmm. more. We gotta get some more, some more lanka. Mm -hmm. So, we should, we, I think we should get that tomorrow. I want some lanka, jackfruit, yeah. It's delicious, y'all. Kay makes it and it's like a little soupy. And it tastes like chicken the way Kay makes it. Oh, man. Kay, she used to make it for me a lot when I first came here. Because when I first came mm -hmm. here, I was vegan. And then something happened. And Big Man 7917 said. And that's the thing. See, Big Man 7917 is getting my attention because of Super Chats. How about some blue? <laughs> and that's the thing. That's why I said don't 
fall victim to the Filipino diet because I did chabalu twice. I did chabalu twice. And I dealt with it. I can manage it, but I didn't like it. I didn't like it. I actually tried Baloo. The second time I tried it was with the Wallace Life. Wallace Life mm-hmm. came here, it was like three years ago, right? Oh, no, and that's we, your first time, Jay. Oh, that's my first day. It's my first time. I tried yeah, it. I, first I, tried time, the, I tried Baloo. I tried it with the Wallace Life. He was here. Actually, I had a video about it. Mm-hmm. I got to start posting my old content because you guys, mm-hmm. probably like, you did. You had the Wallace Life in the video? Yeah. I had way. I, Wallace Life was here like three years ago. And I did a video with him. Me, him, Abby, and Kay. And we had Baloo. We were out at the singing waiter, cooks and waiters. They were singing songs and dancing. And it was crazy. But, uh, yeah. I think I, I think I can say, if if you guys, you know, just curious, um, of course, it's your choice. It's not us. We just Yeah, it's not my choice. Guys. I'm just saying. If ever you just yeah. want to try it, just try it. But, you know, you, you also need to check the nutritional facts. Just try it once or twice just for you to, to, to see the, you know, to experience the food. But Jay just want to share because we already try other stuff. But we didn't try other Filipino dish like pork dish. So don't we don't eat pork. Yeah, we don't eat pork, yeah. But it's still your choice, guys, you know. Um, they yeah, yeah, they said it. here. Mm-hmm. It's your thing. Do what you want to do. Mike said he, he liked the best soup I ever had is sour shrimp. So is that the Senegang? I think it's that's the it Senegang too. Senegal, yeah. Made up or not. It could be Senegal. Yeah, Togon is delicious with jackfruit. Uh, like the one in the store. Let me show you guys why I never tried Togon. <laughs> doesn't like Togon. Jay doesn't like a jackfruit, guys. In He doesn't like jackfruit if it's sweet. He said it smells like, I know, but... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it smells so good and delicious. Jay said, why, why it smells like... But Jay, Jay... I was like, Jay, does it smell like that? So I, that's why I cannot, I cannot buy, I cannot buy langka, the fruit one, the fruit, but the veggie, he likes the veggie, doesn't like the fruit, but it smells oh, like no, my JJ. Off, yeah, it was, it was off. I said, no, I said, no, I don't like it. But, um, yeah, but guys, that's, that's what I said for me. Like, like, cause what it is, a lot of Filipino dishes and a lot of Filipino street food is pork. It's pork. Or it's something you should be eating, you know, like like Esau. Esau, isn't that, isn't that yeah, uh, we, that's pork, okay? Or what's not, that chicken brain? Yeah, chicken I think yeah, chicken, 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 chicken intestine. intestine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, guys, I'm Filipino, but I never try Esau. I try it. I never try. It. I mean, I try it once with Jay in Tendesita. He say. I was seeing a lot of people eating Esau, right? But I see Esau. I don't eat Esau. But I said, let me just buy the Esau and try it. I really don't like it. Uh, even it's my first time with Jay, ha? Huh? I, I let Jay taste Did you taste it? The ISO? Uh-huh. No, I Did never you taste taste it? It? Yeah, I tried it, but I wasn't able to finish it. I don't like it that much. But a lot of people like it. So it depends on your taste, bud, too. I, I just tried it once, just to see how it tastes. <laughs> Big man said, I love longanisa, lying, milk fish, bangus, and spaghetti Filipino style with the hot dog pieces. Thank you for the super chat, Big Man seven nine one seven. Yeah, thanks a lot. Jay loves laing, Big Man. He likes la. Yeah, he laing. Loves I like bubbles. the one. Dude, K makes it. K makes the laing, right? Which is veggies only. Which just the what's that? What's that veggie you use in there? Uh, there's what's, only what's the veggie laing. What's the veggie? No, what's the, no, I'm saying what's, what veggie is that? What's that? Lying is oh my gosh, I'm gonna go to Google now. I forgot the, yeah, I the forgot. word for lying. I forgot too. It's made of Gabi, but I don't know how to say it. In Gabi, English. yeah. Gosh, oh, in okay, English. The way it makes yeah, it. It's delicious. <laughs> it's delicious, guys. And um, people cook like that too, dude. Yeah, no, talking about she makes it without like the pork in it. A lot of people put pork in it. And she makes I, it with no pork, no nothing. No meat, Google nothing. said Gabi vegetable, right? <laughs> Google said night vegetable because gabi is night night gabi gabi in, th- in english is night so i searched mm-hmm. what is gabi vegetable in google said night vegetable <laughs> the SRV is sounds Tango interesting leaves. you know what i'm going to do for the srv right i'm going to i'm going to look into it okay we need to contact the guy okay remember the guy that processed my um permanent resident the first time Okay. Hmm? 
Remember the guy that processed my permanent residence the first time? Mm-hmm. We need to contact him about the SRV. Oh, okay. I will yeah, try. We, I will ask Yeah, him. We, we contact him. We call, we're gonna, uh, guys, I'm going to contact him tomorrow, and I'll let you know. I'll let you know. If, it's, if, if, if he's available, I'll post it. I'll post it on my... Um, I'll post it in my community. Also, I'll post it in my... Uh, I'll make a video about it, actually, and then post it in my community. So you guys can always see it. And I'll be sure to put it in all my videos so you guys can see it. Because if, if he has a way they can get you over here before the Philippines opens, I'm sure some guys would take it. But I know I should have had this, I should have had this information, what, six to, to two months to a year ago because, you know, you guys should have came. But still, no, you could have came because they just reopened it like around January, but you still could have came around then. But I just wasn't up on it. I wasn't thinking about it. Durian is very mm-hmm. sweet, they say, but woo, the smell, yeah. Durian, I don't like durian. The smell, it was too much. It gets in your mouth, and I couldn't mm-hmm. deal with it. I couldn't deal with durian. I hated it. Actually, uh, Sispinay forever, they thought it, it's really jackfruit. It's not durian that Jay said. It smells like the JJ. Because uh, I let it, when he first came here, I bought like, langka because I really miss the fruit langka, the jackfruit. So I let him taste it. He doesn't like the taste. He doesn't like a smell. He eat dorian. He, he doesn't like the taste of dorian, but the, the smell. But he ate dorian before. And but it's, website, it's not dorian. For a video editor, not right now. Um, actually, K, me and K take care of that ourselves. Um, I don't really, really want to need a video editor right now because um, you know, it it would cost too much. And I mm, just cost too much. Yeah, what happened, again? No, it's also the views is not a lot yet, guys. So yeah, exactly. It's not like I'm getting me in views. So if he's getting it, like hundred thousand views, yeah, maybe we will hire <laughs> an yeah. editor, or maybe hundred thousand to two hundred thousand. But uh, right now, we're Jay's getting like one thousand, two thousand, five thousand, six thousand, two thousand, one thousand. What happens, what happens you know? with me? What happens with me? And I'm going to be honest with you guys. What happens with me is you guys have your own busy schedules. So when I post videos, right? You guys may catch it a day later. Or sometimes you guys may not catch it for like three, four days. You know, and um, you guys will finally catch it when you get to it. And then you may see one video when I post it five. So what happens is the, the views don't come in the same. Where other guys, they have loyal people that watch every single video they do. And I'm not, I'm not trying to, uh, I'm not blaming anybody for anything. I'm just saying this is facts. It's just facts. So a lot of you guys have busy schedules. So, you know, you won't, you won't catch my videos like that. You catch them when you can, and for that reason, you know, the views are not like so. I wouldn't need a video editor because it's a big difference, guys. If you got 10,000 uh views on a video, you know, the money is different than you have uh, 2,000 views, it's different. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, bye, Cliff, and well, good night. Be good. I'll see you have later. Chain K. And see good you later. Night. Uh, uh simply, I guess, is leaving. Oh, too. she's leaving too. Okay, I'll see you later. The cold nice is spicy. I like the Tagalog lying. We like it Abby, spicy. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna get we're gonna get Abby time. So right now we're hitting the second hour. It's uh do you have a question for Abby? If Abby wants to participate in Abby time, come on up. <laughs> okay, you got her email? Or send her on Facebook. Yeah, I, I can I can send her um yeah, send, send, send her I can send her in yeah, yeah, yeah. Universities, can I do one video for you for free? Then Web said he wants to do one video for us for free. What do you think about that, Kay? It's up to you, Jay. Don't ask me. It's up to you. Well, you right now he's trying to take your job. <laughs> <It's not laughs> you trying to fire me? Just kidding. I'm joking. Yeah. No, I think well, no, I'm, wanna... let me see. I'm gonna see. Um, email just... me. Email me. Email me. Think... Blackfilipino at gmail.com. I think he just want to show you how he edit the video. That's why he said he's gonna uh, do a video for free. So you will see how what's the you know how we edit the video. Yeah, okay, email it's... me to blackfilipino. <laughs> the professor gmail. said now it's time for dear Abby. <laughs> the yeah, it's time for dear Abby. <laughs> Hold on, let me get let me get her on here because Abby, <coughs> Abby has I, uh, I gotta say, Abby's like the 
not what we say, like the like the wise, the wise Filipina of the Philippines, right? Abby, see, the thing is, like, you got people, you got even YouTubers, right, who make videos, mm -hmm. <clears throat> but they they fake, they fake as all of them. And I don't want to say any names, but they fake. And you see them, it's like, oh, okay, you know you're not like that in real life. And then you got Filipinas like Kay and like Abby that just real, no, no fakeness about them. And no they filter. talk about their real, no filter. They talk about their real experiences. So that's why I love love when Abby comes on and talks. So if she's around, I would love to have Dear Abby session. Start if you if if she's not the module. Yeah, because <laughs> Abby's printing the world for the school. <laughs> she, she prints the whole Philippines for the school. You know, and um well gotta go now. Change Thank you, game. Mike. Yeah, I, I see you later, Mike. See you later, man. Thank you but for yeah. dropping by. But yeah, and also too, what Abby said before, what Abby said before, right? What happened in the school with the kids, I thought was sad. And also that the teachers are overworked, I thought was sad. All the situations were sad. Um, well, gotta go. As I was my I love jackfruit and it's very healthy. Actually, I want to make I want to Katie make some for me. I can't wait to have some. Because guys, I, I'm gonna go vegan again. I have to go vegan again, ASAP. But let me see. How he said, how do I break my panes? Uh, Roman Catholic ways. Well, the only way, well, no, not I wouldn't have you do that the way you're saying it. I would say, okay, where did you go? I would say big man 7917. Um, you know, you're probably not gonna do that. But the thing is, is, is she even really like Roman Catholic like that? Like that? Because people claim the name, but you know, they haven't been to church for years, you know. So I don't know. I don't I don't know if she, how Catholic she is, you know. But um, here we go. We can't see you, Jay. We can't see you, Jay. <laughs> can't see me. I can see yeah, so you. We, oh, so hi. we got Abigail on. So hi guys. Hi mga kuya hi. Tate. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, the last time we spoke, right? Mm. About four to five videos came from that. Well, actually, not really. I think about two to three videos came from that, right? And I don't know. Did you see the comments of the videos? Uh, I, I think I, I did. I did, yes. Some people, it opened, up, it opened up a lot of conversation. And a lot of people in the last video were talking about their situations. And I felt extremely sad because... It was a lot of people saying, oh, well, Jay, no, I, that happened with me. And somebody was trying to write, and I said, oh, I didn't expect that to happen like that. Mm. But, and then I had somebody that said to me, they said, you know, um, you have to leave this to the professionals. And then they didn't really, I don't think they understood, Abby. That's why these things need to be talked about. Mm. Because they, they were able to get their emotions out. Even in the comments, I was shocked. And then... I feel like telling some of them, you want to call me? Like, do you want to email me? You know, the black Filipino at gmail.com. Let's talk on it. And not, not even on, I wouldn't even make a video about it. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because people, people need to be talked to, you know? And even, yeah. yeah, people need to talk to. And I spoke with a counselor. I sp not a counselor. I spoke with a, um, even a, a psychologist, I think. He said, I think he said he was a psychologist, contacted me on Facebook Ooh. and said, oh, mm -hmm. Yeah, he said, yeah. He, I'm telling you, Abigo, it's because it opened up, it opened up a, a, a conversation. And uh, I said, look, I would love to get your expertise because he told me some things that happened. He said, this happens a lot in the Philippines. And he mm -hmm. said, I've even had situations where they, they come to me. And mm -hmm. so he's dealing with it. He's dealing with it. And I, and I wanted to get more from him. And I, I'll, I'll keep talking to him on, 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 on the, in the background. I will, I will never expose what he's saying at all. That, I'm just that's why I'm just saying that I spoke with him. I would never say what he told me. But um no, he, he only I can tell that he said a lot of people are going through this. And he said, You're right, they just need someone to talk to. Mm. You know. And I, I think it's good. Like Abby, what you're doing with the with the with your students is a great thing. I think really Abby, you should be like the head teacher of your school. You should be like the head teacher. You should be like the um, counselor at the district. Seriously. Seriously, Abby. Uh, well, 
it's it's more of well let's say I think I love the kids. Yeah. I I do love the kids and those kids that those kids that are let's uh, that are around me are let's say trust me enough to open up. Mhm. So may, maybe that's why they are they are like that. Mm-hmm. And thankfully even though if and I'm I'm kind of surprised sometimes that I have my you know my, my mask on and then someone would let's say 10 feet 20 feet mm-hmm. before I approach him they would just him or her would say hey mom abby how are you so mm. I, I don't know all i know is i'm doing what i'm doing and what i'm doing is listening to the kids sometimes they mm-hmm. they just someone they just need someone there to listen. Yeah. Yeah. And this, that's like, I, 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 I'm getting tears in my eyes right now, for real. I'm getting tears <laughs> in my eyes right now. Why? No. Because, no, this is beautiful. Kids really need someone to listen to. Seriously. Mm. It's, it's big. Because you'd be surprised. And I'm happy that you, you like that, you know. Because when mm. I was in school, I would never, ever want to go talk to a teacher because if mm. teachers you can't, but then you had that one teacher that was always like man that, that teacher's cool like you, and you would say something to but the, th- the things kids are telling to you it's like kids don't tell it to nobody i i know oh, why i'm yes. thinking kids don't do that they yes, probably yes. do but they don't do that one from yeah mm-hmm. yes and it's just that sometimes it's frustrating that you cannot just you know meddle with the situation because Mm -hmm. um there are still legal processes Mm -hmm. that needs Mm -hmm. to be done for for the for the kid to get out of the situation yeah and and like i said because i don't have uh, my my power is limited to listening Mm -hmm. and i think Listening sometimes is enough for them to talk to me and make sure that me as the person that they entrusted their mm-hmm. their, their 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 darkest secrets is I don't know I, I I'm I, sometimes I'm I'm speechless with with what those kids are opening up with mm-hmm. yeah. From from the funny things to yes to the serious ones, mm-hmm. so I I'm humbled. I'm humbled mm-hmm. by the trust that those kids gave me. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I think they feel like they feel safe, and they feel maybe they feel like they can trust you more than their parents because if they said it to their parents, the parents will judge them or they reprimand mm-hmm. them. That's why they said it to you than saying saying it to their parents. Yes, because. Sometimes, due to the fact that what Kuya Jay said, that babies having babies, some of the, let's say, some of the newer generation is a product of the mm-hmm. mother was too young, too young to, to you know, um, she, she got the kid like 15, 16, and then she needs the, uh, she has the responsibility to, provide for the kids and yet sometimes um, due, due to the work or any other factors some parents cannot see that their kids need something else other than other than I know other than other than the money that mm-hmm. that the parents provide yeah mm-hmm. yeah and, and the thing is <clears throat> These problems start young, you know. I, I'll be real. My mother had issues, right? Mm-hmm. You know, you know when it started from when she was young. And you know mm-hmm. what happened? I don't think she had a teacher she can talk to. I don't mm-hmm. think she had a teacher she can talk to. You know, there were no teachers like you in those days. 
you know, nowadays you may find teachers like that more, but you know, in the 60s, not 60s, yeah, 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 in the 70s, when she was a little girl, the 60s too, she's a little girl in the 60s, you know, that wasn't, the teachers weren't like that, you know, teachers were just teachers, and now you have teachers now, because as a teacher now, at days, you have to be a counselor too. And yes. if you're not, if you're not, you might as well not be a teacher. I think more mm -hmm. teachers get to learn that and learn from you, you know, from teachers like you, especially in the mm -hmm. Philippines. Mm -hmm. Do, do you guys I, have guidance counselor in your school, Abby? We have an assigned guidance counselor, but I cannot say that her, her um, let's say her profession is really guidance counselor. Mm. Although, although I know from from a certain memorandum, memorandum memorandum that there should be a licensed guidance counselor, but that that DepEd cannot. I don't know if they cannot provide it or the school cannot provide it. But basically, what I'm doing right now maybe may sound like I'm a guidance counselor to the kids, but totally i'm not i'm not and that's sad because sometimes mm -hmm. they kids need someone to talk to it's just mm -hmm. that sometimes the stigma of someone someone is going to the guidance office is because he did something bad not mm -hmm. because you need some someone that is trustworthy to listen to your problem yeah. because it's a different setting here in the Philippine education. It's very different. You know what, though? You know what? Mm. Have a go. Yeah. I think it's, I, I think it's meant for you to be a change. Seriously, uh, it's mm -hmm. one of those things, and I, I want to put that pressure on you because you, I think you can handle it. I think it's meant for you to be the person to just say, "Hey, you know what? This this there is a problem, and I will do it because these kids." They need it. And then also, even when you go to the U.S., even do it for that right now, while you're here right now. I, I know it's going to be hard because you're leaving. But, mm -hmm. man, these kids need it because you have a knack for, for, for children to get children to listen to you and tell you everything. That's that's a gift. Yeah, I, I even even when I was in high school, mm -hmm. some of my 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 classmate's secrets i can keep it until now see i, don't... <laughs> Tell see? Me the secret. I know all your classmates in high school abigail tell me all the yep. secrets and the name i know all of them <laughs> yeah <laughs> and, 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 and k said it too let me see let me post k said many folks think it's okay to just brush off mental health it's if it's not addressed it's a cycle over and over it, it yeah. really is. It really is. Yeah. It 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 is it is, and sometimes the stigma of mental health it means that you are crazy. No, you're not crazy. <clears throat> it's just mm -hmm. that I don't know because of how the movies, the '90s, the '80s movies pro portray um, a mental asylum, mm -hmm. where every 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 person that's there are psychos. Mm -hmm. But really, mental health has been an issue, but it's not talked about. Mm -hmm. But it's not talked about. Mm -hmm. So I know in my family, there is mental health issues also, but mm -hmm. it's just that it's not talked about. That's sad. That's sad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah, and Kerry said it as well. He said it's the, he said uh, education will change the way the country thinks. And stigma is that when they hear psychiatrists or mental health are crazy, it's not. And it, and it's true. And that's the crazy thing that bugs me out is some of those numbers in the Philippines. I have Philippines is the lowest. Is one of the lowest as far as the percentages of people that are not mentally sick. And I can it's kind of depression. Guess. This depression. What what is, what you what you say here? Depression. What do you mean depression? I hear, I don't mean. That's don't the mean. lowest depression. I mean the de depression. Yeah. Depression. But you know what it was? You know what it was for me? 
and it's the same thing because I know Filipinos are the same way. You know, you know why I wasn't depressed, Kay? Because I would have problems, and then I would drink them away. Mm-hmm. That's why I was on alcohol for so many years. So that's the same thing with Filipinos. I said it in a video already, but I'm saying it again here because when you're drinking your problems away, that's a problem because it leads to other problems. Remember, Kay, I kept getting a, a feeling in my stomach, in my side stomach, where I kept saying, mm-hmm. Kay, it's killing me, and I get, it's really in pain. If mm-hmm. I would have kept drinking, I would have died. Because mm-hmm. it was giving me kidney problems. Mm-hmm. It was giving me kidney problems, and I really felt it. And like sometimes I would get feelings in my, in my back, and I know it's my kidneys. And when I stopped drinking recently, I stopped drinking for nine months now, I don't feel it anymore. Yeah, and I have nothing to do with the being pasawa, you know. Some people are pasawa, doesn't listen to <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah but, I was being pasawa. But, but yeah, um, based on <laughs> but based on your observation, Kuya Jay, that's why we have the drinking culture. Yeah. We I have know. a very unique drinking culture. Oh, yeah. What yes. kind of unique drinking culture is that? Okay, I've been exposed to drinking culture of Lokban Quezon. Mm. So, on that no, uh, on uh, based on my experience, um, um, they have this shot for the devil. Mm. <laughs> they called it shot for the devil. It's just a shot, and then you would throw it on on the corner of the room. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then there was this. Well, uh, there was this, um, well, uh, I don't know, but because of how how pandemics are right now, it's just that um, for a group of people within the table, you only have one shot glass that mm-hmm. that is shared by everybody and uh, one, one glass of chaser, anything. It, it it can be water, it can be an iced tea, it can be it can be something else, buko juice. Mm-hmm. It, it's just that, like, <laughs> I, it, yes, it is. Um, it, I saw it and I witnessed it because I was the one who's pouring the drink. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they to, they uh, I said, guys, I'm not going to participate with the drinking, and oh, in order to show my pakikisama. Uh, I will be the tangera or the one who would pour the drinks. So I I I, I was I was exposed to the drinking culture. Mm-hmm. So in Lukban, there is a separate separate table for the boys, and then there's a separate table for the girls. That's that's what I see. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So so yeah, drinking culture here is very unique, and then sometimes. Sometimes <laughs> I witnessed this like three years ago, four years ago, grade seven, and they they smuggled lambanog during my Christmas party. Mm. Lambanog, guys, is coconut it's... vodka. Oh, yeah, Kids, wow. grade seven. Imagine <laughs> how old is that? Um, 12, 12, 13. 13. 12, 13. 12, 13. Yeah. Yeah. And they 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 disguised it as uh it it was disguised in a C2 C2 iced tea, the iced tea, C2 mm-hmm. bottle. C2. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Red. So it cannot be um it, it's identified. not you know. It, yeah, it cannot be identified. I kind of uh, I found it out when the party is over, so the kids are helping me clean the room and they forgot the this big Cito bottle. I said, "Oh, what happened to this one?" Uh, okay, no. If no one's going to claim it, let's go and <laughs> drink it. And then when I open the bottle, oh my god, the 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 smell is not iced tea but lambanog. Mm. And I was mad because you smuggled. So you deceived me. Yeah, I said they you know because I was me. <laughs> I was fuming, I was fuming mad and I said, what happened? Uh, you know, let's say uh, my mouth turned into a machine gun. <laughs> because I said, what the hell happened with here? I thought we are we are 
we're we're having fun without the the drinking and I told you specifically not to not to smuggle any drinks and they mm-hmm. did and their plan was to drink on a friend's house because the friend's house mother allowed them to mm-hmm. yeah that's uh I, 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 that's I, for that Okay, okay, I know I have a story about drinking, uh, not me drinking, but I really scared when somebody drinking and then they're becoming, you, you know, okay. they're becoming crazy and punching the wall. <laughs> this is what happened um, way back when I was working in Thailand and I sleep over with my friend's house. Oh, mm. Jay just left. I sleep over <laughs> with my friend's house um, and then the brother is there. And then we, I don't drink, so they're drinking in, in, the, in the first floor and the second floor, I'm already lying down, just resting. And I don't like to join because I really don't drink alcohol at all. And then they got drunk and then they start shouting. I was like, oh my gosh, I got scared. <laughs> and then they're, they're fighting each other like, oh, they're telling about uh, the past family problems, problem, family problems they have. And you, 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 they're all three sisters. They are two brothers and one sister is there. And the other, the other brother is punching the wall and saying, yes. saying things. And it was like, oh, I got scared. Like, I really hate when people are shouting and mm-hmm, shouting mm-hmm. loud. And I was like, I don't, I'm not going to go down. I'm going to go. I'm going to stay here. I don't like what if somebody kill each other there. I'm scared. That's the, <laughs> so opposite, like. that's the opposite of my experience. Because maybe because we are, we are all girls. Mm-hmm. We are all girls. So... Uh, it's either they are singing gr- drunk, happy drunk, or crying drunk. Mm-hmm. Speaking <laughs> English drunk, too. Uh, no, no, no. Not that. <laughs> um, I think it's it's when this person, which is male, did that. But it was a different occasion. But when it comes to the boarding house that I was boarding in when I was in college, it was like, Happy drunk, singing drunk, and crying drunk. And because they know that I don't drink, they said that, okay, Abby, take care of me, take care of us when someone vomit. Mm-hmm. And my me being Salbahe Atike was like <laughs> taking them, taking videos of them. <laughs> And then later we'll show it to them. I'm not posting it on social media because that's, uh, that's, that's, that's bullying. It's just that. Mm-hmm. So this is going to be cybercrime. Like, yeah. Uh, I just, I, I'm a bit of a bully offline, maybe. <laughs> so yeah, um, drinking culture here is really unique. Mm-hmm. And for those who are drinking and experience drinking, not in, not in metropolitan area, in the province the drinking mm-hmm. culture in the province is very unique so which sometimes yes when someone gets drunk all all of those sealed feelings is pouring pouring gushing down yeah that's i know why, that's why the let's say um sabi nga eh, all the stink of the family will come out, out <laughs> co- are coming out because actually of that. Jay, the, the only time Jay, I see Jay very drunk because when Jay drank before, when he was drinking before, he always mm. drink at home. He never go out and drink with mm. friends and meet uh, friends or meet like a uh, foreigner, like American mm. to drink. He always, mm. When he, he want to drink, he just want to drink at home alone. And ah. one time, there, there's a reunion, a family reunion with my mother's side reunion mm. last uh, 2000. That was 2018. No, that's, yeah, 2017. That's 2017. So, Jay, drink with Tito Joey. I, I, do you know Tito Joey, right? Drink with Tito Joey, with mm. my other cousin. He drinks a lot and they keep pouring him a drink. I said, Jay, stop drinking. Because I don't drink, guys. I don't smoke. I don't drink. And then I was like, Jay, stop drinking. And that's like, it's a party with, you know, with a uh, reunion. So, they keep giving him drink. And they, I don't know if they're tasting him or they're making him drunk. And then Jay, if he's drunk, he's so sweet like this. And, oh. <laughs> and sometimes <laughs> loud too, but he's never like punch anyone. He's so sweet and he's just sweet and uh, sometimes loud, but not loud like, you know, like shouting. crazy loud. Uh, okay. but, it, 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 but that was that was New Year. So they're like, oh, happy New Year. They will hug me. And it's like, 
he's too noisy. I was like, yeah, he's too noisy. Stop drinking like this anymore. He, he don't drink after that. He don't drink like that much no more. Because it's like, mm. it's, it's, oh, AJ, explain yourself. Why are you coming back right <laughs> oh. now? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just, I'm, I, I want to do that for I don't want to, people should be leaving, but, um, I call it a drunk yard. Yeah, drunk yard. <laughs> no. That day, I never ever did that again. That day, I got so drunk. Guys, like I, I, I got so drunk and I I don't remember drinking that much. You know when you get drunk mm -hmm. and you don't remember drinking? How much you drink? Because mm -hmm. it was just pouring, pouring flowing and, and they had so many bottles. Because it was New Year's. So I bought I bought a big bottle. I bought a bottle like this big. I bought I bought two bottles. Over right, put it there. You know, you, everybody brings a bottle on New Year, so I'm drinking. I'm drinking everything, and then they start. They play this game where they were doing shots, right? Mm. And so me, say you know, want to fool myself because I'm around Filipinos can drink. So I'm like, okay, I'm getting I'm getting the cups with the most shots. We like playing the drinking game. I end up taking the most, and then. By the time the night was over, all I remember is you saying Happy New Year's, and I just kept hugging Kay and falling all over her. I'm talking, I'm hugging Kay, and I'm like, and I, and I am, I am a sweet drunk. When, when, I, <laughs> when, I, when, I, when I get drunk, that's when I want to make love. And so I'm, I'm hugging and kissing on Kay, and you know she's loving it. But yeah, I blacked out. That's exactly what happened. I blacked out. Ooh. But I, I was still functioning though. I still knew what was happening. I don't black out anymore. I, I used to do that when I was younger. When I was younger, I used to get super drunk. But anyway, I don't want to talk yeah. to you about that. And 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 the 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 alcohol percentage of the local 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 alcohols in the Philippines are really high. Mm -hmm. Are really high, especially those who are. You know, the town is specialized on a certain. Lambanog. Yeah, Lambanog. Um. Uh, a town near my town specialized that. So it's their product. It's, uh, let's say, um, one product town. Mm -hmm. It's what they're doing. It's a livelihood. So, yeah. Drinking culture here in the Philippines is really unique. It is. Unique and, unique and crazy. <laughs> yes. And, and a lot of times, you know, and, and that's it, because I can relate to the Filipinos when it comes to that. I can relate to them because that's how we do it where I'm from, you know. I was used to that. So, like, and I said it before, like, Kay's uncle, I would see him all the time, and he, every time he sees me, he does this. I can't wait to see him again. I'm be like, no, I'm going to grab him. and say, look, you need to stop drinking, you know. I can't wait to go to the province. That's the first person I'm going to grab is him. I don't understand yeah. my, my office mate when after we finish working, like night shift, at 6 a.m., they're going to go directly in Market Market. I worked in Market Market before. Go directly to seafood restaurant that we eating we ate mm -hmm. before and drink there. And I was like, how are you going to drink? You're so tired working and you're just going to end up drinking after no, work. Okay. It's crazy. No, when you drink, when you drink, you get a boost of energy. Mm -hmm. Like you can go from work, okay? Once you step out of work and you know you're going to drink, the excitement to drink boost your spirits way through the roof. And mm -hmm. then when you get that drink in you, it's like, oh, you're so excited because you're so happy. Mm -hmm. That's what drink, drinking is like. It's a, it's a, it's a culture. And Red Horse is not sweet. Red Horse is, uh, has like a regular, Red Horse, has, it's, it's better than like Coke 45 or something like that. It's not more, mm. liquor. but, um, yeah, it's not good though. I don't like it. I, I could never even think about tasting it now. I'll, I'll kill myself. Okay, okay. Let me read the comment of Karib here. Karib said, individuals don't report trauma, concern for safety, fear of retribution, fear of being judged by providers, shame about victimization, not seeing a significant, a significant event as traumatic. And then another one, lack of trust in providers, not recalling trauma due to denial, repression or the dissociation, tired of being interviewed, dissociation, tired of being interviewed, believe that it doesn't matter. Yeah, there's a lot of people like that. They just that sounds like everybody I grew up with. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. denial, denial. Yeah, no, and, and that's why I said Filipinos remind me so much of like where I'm from. I've always said that, you know, and it's true. Like so, like when you come to the Philippines, right? 
that love you get is real. You know, people want to really know who you are. You know, now you can you're gonna find some people that are shysty, but yeah, no, you're still gonna get that love. It's gonna be real. All right, later, later, Tony Anderson. It's definitely gonna be real. Bye, kuya. Bye, kuya Tony. And and that's what I love about it. You know, so Big Man Seven Nine One Seven was right on time, guys. He was so on time, and he said. He started talking about Thailand, and I said, oh, great comparison, because it's, it's really night and day. And also, other any other country, for it also. And, it, and then also the Philippines, the the, the, the big, how can I say, the big, I can, I'm, not trying to, I'm trying to find the right word, but the way that everyone speaks English here, you know, so many we people are, even teach English here, yeah. We are, I think, around eight in the whole world when mm -hmm. it comes to english speaking english so that's why i know that most foreigners like to be here mm -hmm. because people can communicate easily and mm -hmm. you don't have to learn much of the tagalog or any dialect or any languages unless mm -hmm. you are really dedicated to really learn the culture and the language mm -hmm. of the philippines but if it's just a passing tourist uh, English is okay, is enough. English is enough. Sure is. Mm -hmm. Because in it Thailand, sure like uh, when you visit there and you cannot speak Thai, and you visit, like you ask local, they really cannot speak English. You can only when, talk to students that studying when, university. And they they can it. answer you back. I felt it when I was in Thailand, right? If I didn't have K with me, I could have never been been good in Thailand. Philippines, oh, you I'm can fine. Scam. You can yeah. also. Oh, yeah. Though, though it's worse. They'll get you in, in Thailand. Even worse. Oh, I will tell yeah. you the story about uh, JNA book, a grab, right? So we're writing yeah. a grab already. It's already accepted and we're already mm -hmm. riding. So when you say you're riding, meaning he already picked you up, right? And then when we are riding, he found out maybe because he's like a delinquent driver. So he cannot see the destination. So when he accepted and we are riding, he picked us up. That's the time it's going to show the destination, right? And he found that it's a little bit far. He said, oh, I'm sorry. You canceled it. I said, no, we didn't cancel it. We're sitting down at the back it. of your car. Yep. I was like, what do you mean we cancel it? Like, no, we didn't cancel. No, you, it shows here you cancel. And then he canceled it, was telling it to me. Like, he canceled it on the spot. I said, no, we didn't cancel. No, I'm sorry. It shows here that you cancel it. And then he said, I, I can drop you there. Then he dropped us there. And then I said, my D. My D means you're bad. Which is my D is really bad word. Like you're really bad, really really mm. bad. Mm. That's the word that you're gonna say to Thai if you are uh, if um they treating you bad. So I said mm. my D na ka, my D mak mak I was so upset. Like I said you're so bad, very 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 bad. The mak 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 is very 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 bad. And then I closed the door and then I left the the car. It's like I was so upset because this is grab. It's not even taxi. Taxi is okay mm -hmm. because he can drop us by. But you know. La he's so he's a liar. <laughs> I was so upset. And I hope he feel that because I was upset that time when he dropped us like somewhere. And it's really hard to did book. You, did you did you report it? No, I, 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 I give a bad review, of course. I give a bad review, but you know, they cannot really do something about it like right yeah. away, you know. And they give like a strike. Uh, yeah. But I was yeah. like, Okay, I, I know you're gonna feel bad because they feel bad if you say my D. My D mm -hmm. ka, my D Lui. They doesn't like that, so yeah. You can't speak. You're speaking Thai. My <laughs> dear, <laughs> my dear, my dear, my dear. Very bad, very bad. <laughs> I actually no. don't say my dear, mak 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 mak. Is thank no. you, mak mak mak. When I, I was out mak, there, mak. It, when I was out there, in case started speaking Thai, I, I was going for the I did that. I got turned on, man. Look, look, knowing these all these languages. <laughs> language, language, Gina, like the a Filipino that speaks language, language, Gina. Look at my language, Gina over here. <laughs> my language, Gina. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, um, I, I was, I was shocked. Okay, you looking sexy that night. She was though. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> no, I'm but but yeah it's just that like i uh like i said um philippines is the eighth largest speaking english speakers 
in rank in the whole world. And I think mm -hmm. they speak more English than Americans in the Philippines. Yeah, because yeah, because <laughs> how Filipinos are conscious with their um the way they speak, even mm -hmm. the grammar, mm -hmm. and the hyper uh, Filipinos are hypercritical about a fellow Filipino speaking mm -hmm. English. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are. <laughs> you know how many times Kay got bashed on her channel? Uh huh. For speaking English, and Kay speaks English very well. I'm like, no. They, they They're like, oh, why, you, why you keep speaking English in the Philippines? Black, delete. Why, why, why you need to speak English? Okay, black, delete. I don't, before I reply, and now I don't, I don't delete black. Don't ever come to my channel. I'm having a hard time. I spend my time editing my video and you just got to say yeah. that. You didn't even watch my whole video. My video is not about, it's not about me speaking English. It's about the shopping video. And you said that, black delete, never come back. <laughs> I don't need a so, subscriber. Yeah. Right yeah. yeah, me and Kay have to do that. We have to be like that because you can't uh. get too stuck on a comment because, you know, these comments come all out of left field all the time. Mm -hmm. And they come in and you got to read it. And like some people I read it and they, they, they're like they're trying to bash you, and it doesn't make sense what they're trying to bash you about. Like it's not even, yeah. I speak like hi guys, looking back to my YouTube channel, and the whole time I was speaking Tagalog. And Tagalog like, yeah. Oh wait, we well, need to speak English. I was like, okay. So sometimes I want to reply. Like I, I type already the long explanation and everything. Yeah, you can't do it. And yeah. then I was like, oh no, if I reply, the person is gonna reply back, and then they're gonna reply back. I gonna mm -hmm. ex I need to exert more effort. I will be upset. No. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. So I, I don't know. Filipinos, no one of the toxic culture mm -hmm. of 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 the Philippines is being hypercritical with yeah. a mm -hmm. fellow Filipino that yeah. speaks English. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's why, based on your observation, Kuya Jay, we speak more English than yeah. <laughs> a Native American. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's crazy. Like, I, and one time I was talking English with Kay in Manila, right? And then a Filipino kid well, by, he spoke English too. He said, Mom, they speak really good English, right, Kay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Me and Kay were talking about it. We were like, Mom, they speak really good English. And then Mom was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But... And the funny thing, I visit the girl's channel, right? And she's speaking English there. And she doesn't even... <laughs> she's having a wrong grammar. Did they say anything I didn't know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Sometimes you just need to, instead of looking on others, you need to per not really perfect yourself, but just don't look on others because you're going to find mistake. Oh, nobody's perfect. You always find mistake to others. Just yes. improve yourself and just be yourself. Exactly. Do not, just, just don't judge. You know, if you, if you have nothing good to say, do not say anything. If you have mm -hmm. nothing yes. to say, do not type anything, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah, yeah if we don't hold the minds of those viewers, mm -hmm. but I know it pays to have a thick skin sometimes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have to, man. You have to be. Thicker than a rhino, even mm -hmm. thicker. Like people say, rhino skin. It has to be even thicker than that when you're on YouTube. Your skin got to yeah. be. It has to be thicker than than the Timberland boot, the bottom of it. <laughs> before before I was hurt, Abby. If you start doing YouTube, there's a lot of basher. Yeah. Before I was hurt, now I I have a thick face and I just don't yeah. care. Like I'm doing this because I love doing this, but now I have thick face. I don't, I don't care no more. Like. It's not me. <laughs> what you? What you? Bash the problem me is, not is me. them. Yeah. The problem is them. So uh -huh. so yeah, and uh, on the topic of toxic Filipino culture, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. we we have this. Uh, we have this. Okay. Um, I don't know for those who are already married or already had a girlfriend that mm -hmm. is Filipina. Uh, mm -hmm. as uh, how can I say this not offending anyone <laughs> okay um, there is a culture wherein if you are the one who er who is earning more mm -hmm. who is earning more you, you have the most responsibility for the family mm -hmm. and that's why sometimes example when, when um okay the Filipinos tend to look uh at look down at a Filipina or a Filipino that has a foreign boyfriend or girlfriend mm -hmm. yet yet 
they still expect that there would be help in money. Mm -hmm. So that's why sometimes there would be like Filipinos or Filipinas that ask money from you because they would they want to spend it on their family. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they said that once you are married to a Filipina, you marry the whole family. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes it's yeah, sometimes it's 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 uh, it's a good way, <coughs> but at the same time it's not because what it's about not. my family? How can I how can I, you know, how can I provide with my own family when I'm still supporting your family? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it's true. That's, Mm -hmm. It happens. It happens with poor families. That's why sometimes guys have to make sure they're not marrying a Filipino that's dirt poor, right? Like a mm -hmm. Filipino that ha might may maybe has a job, because a lot of times you're marrying that poor family, and it's gonna happen where the girl is drop that gorgeous, but because her family's in a dire poor situation, you're gonna end up taking care of a family where it's almost gonna be demanded of you. And so as yeah. a guy, a guy has to say, you know what? Do I really want to get into marrying her? Because I feel like Kay's family, for instance, all of them are self-sufficient. All of her sisters went to college. So it was in a situation where I needed to take care of her family. But I'm sure if Kay had a family to where college wasn't important or even working wasn't important, it would have been a lot different, you know? Or Kay wasn't a worker I was looking for somebody that was compatible that way as well. Mm -hmm. Somebody that didn't necessarily need me, you know, because, mm. you know, I didn't want to get, because I already knew it, it was common sense, Abigail. Like me as a person that lived on the world long enough knew if I got a Filipina that was, I just looked at looks only, you know, I was going to get someone that probably was going to bring more problems, mm -hmm. you know? And what I mean by that is someone that's not, culture enough that has had enough been done enough in life as far as a woman can be even 20 years old and has done a lot in life say she could have graduated from college by the time she was 21 and you know been more financially secure in her own self as far as providing for herself but um so it didn't matter that i got with somebody older i got with somebody older because i wanted somebody around my age close to my age that's what i was looking for but some mm -hmm. guys are looking for younger women but they end up with younger women that don't have any experience and they have to yeah. really take care of. And then they end up, you know, not really having someone compatible in the long run. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't have anything against the age gap. Yeah, me neither. But there are those, but there are those, let's say, too much of an age gap that, that the exploitation happened. Mm -hmm. And that's dangerous. And mm -hmm. also, if if sometimes if the Filipina has no choice because he is the mil she he is the mil ticket for her yeah. to get out of poverty, mm -hmm. she has to you know she has to face his abuse, his abuse, yeah. and that's sad because many Filipinas are exploited that way too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And sometimes those those foreign foreign men, foreign men that or even foreign women that knows the situation would mm -hmm. really try to exploit the other one. That's why I'm against I'm against giving giving money during dating. Yeah. During dating because of that situation. No, it's true. And um, and guys, what happens is guys get caught up in it. And it's funny, Abigail. I talked about it. I actually made a video about it today, um, and I added you in there. You're just a, a video monster, I have a go. I'll tell you what it was about. It was about okay. um, when you talked about the red pill, blue pill, and I was like, guys, shouldn't be too nice. And uh, yeah. it's true because what happens is, and you explained it. You explained that a Filipino wanted to do the, um, you said it, I think it was last week, wanted to do the, uh, the month series with you. And you just weren't into it. Mm. And then I said, and then it's not only you, Kate's like that as well. Kate thinks she's so sweet, but she doesn't know she's not. <laughs> Kate, <laughs> Kate, go. She doesn't know, you know, and I'm, and I'm telling you, the reason why Kate's so sweet is because I'm not sweet. 
Because if I was so sweet, K wouldn't be sweet. You understand? Mm. It'd be like, oh, what are you doing? You get on. You understand what I'm saying, Daddy, right? I'm ju- I'm really sweet. <laughs> No. <laughs> Ask my sister. If, I'm the most I, thoughtful and no. sweet. No. Abigail, if I was like the guy, much of you came look at me like, is he gay? <laughs> what is wrong with him? <laughs> you, Abigail, let me tell you about Kay. Kay is so critical. Kay is mean. Not, not, I'm, I'm trying to say. You in can sleep, sleep in no. the other bedroom tonight. <laughs> no, no, no. And you, and you know that's. <laughs> You know that's not happening, but anyway, well, no, seriously though, um, K don't play like and I'll tell that. I know sometimes I say in my videos, K, when I say that, but no, K doesn't play, and a lot of Filipinas don't play like, and like a lot of I said, you can be nice, you can be nice, but you can't be like you know, a pushover, and mm. a Filipino will see right through you and they won't want it, you know, like, oh, mm. this guy's too, he's, he's a pushover, you know, and. The woman won't respect it at the end of the day. Meaning it won't be right away. She'll be with you. Down the line, it'll be problems. It'll be problems. And it'll be... Mm. And you won't expect it. But she secretly in her brain doesn't value you and doesn't see you as a man of worth. Even doesn't matter how much money you have. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I Even in, in, in a Filipino setting, if the, yeah. if the guy if the guy was too sweet, or not too sweet, but let's say a pushover, not as being mm-hmm. sweet, but yeah. just to, to, to get the attention of the girl and he's spending money, <laughs> like you said, doing this. He's, he's being, <laughs> what you call the, he is being a push, he has this vibe that, oh, I can step on him. Yeah. Um, and I'll be the winner. Yeah. Yes. And, so, and also, yeah. And, and what happens is guys get caught up in that too. And I, I say it all the time. Women don't respect it anywhere. Guys uh, guys will come here and think, oh, I can show this and show I have this and that. And really, you're thinking that it's respected when it's not. You're thinking, okay, the woman will look at you and say, okay, I can use him. And they'll use you for what you displaying to be used for. But they don't respect it. So a lot of times, guys, foreigners keep saying it all the time. They send my peers, oh, no, they want man want money. They do, but they don't want to showcase them. And a perfect example is when I showed the girl and I, I, I asked her what she did. For, she said, no, 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 no. And because she had a bad experience with a foreigner, just showed the money right away. Oh, I can bring you to America. And she said, no. Like, well, you crazy? Yeah. That's, the Filipinas, and, they look at you like you're nuts. Yeah. Any respectful Filipina, when you show the money right away, yeah. we have this tendency to be frightened. And, you know, it's it's a big no-no for us mm-hmm. to, to, let's say, okay, we are being suspicious. Yeah. It's either we be, we are being suspicious or we will use you to the mm-hmm. best of their ability. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I, like I said, a friend of mine that we just recently talked about, she was good in manipulating the guys that she's mm-hmm. talking with. Uh, it's not exactly. many, it's not many, but she can be, like I said, she can be aggressive if the guy is aggressive, and she mm-hmm. can be docile when the guy is beating around the bush. So she mm-hmm. can jive with that. So... I was amazed by by that because I'm I'm the one translating her Tagalog to English, mm. and it's just that it's it's just sad that she's resorting to that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Philippi, uh, we have this um, we have this um, uh, metaphor. We bend like a bamboo when the wind gets tough. That's us. That's that's us, Filipinas. Oh my gosh. That's a good that's not, I like that one. We've been like a bamboo when the wind gets tough. I heard that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, and it shows how resilient Filipinos are. Mm-hmm. I don't know with with the colonized with the colonized country who colonized us. So mm-hmm. we 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 develop this tendency to to adapt quickly. 
Mm-hmm. And if that adaptation turns to exploitation, the one who's the victim is the one who's giving the money. Mm. And that is dangerous. That is very Oof. dangerous. <laughs> Man. <laughs> you said it. You said it. And um yeah. If I, I feel like if if any man watches this, right, he's got to say to himself, he should know right away, like, you know, just don't be that way. I mean, we're coming into the end of Earth history, you know, and you're going to find someone that's for you. They're going to be for you. You know, if not, then it's just not, you know, you can't buy You can't buy love. So mm-hmm. if somebody says, oh, they need something. Don't think, oh, I have to buy the love because you don't want that love. It's so not I have love. A question. I yeah. have a question for you, Abby. What can you say about Jay's title today? The love you get in the Philippines, is it the money or the culture? Yeah, what do you have to say about that? Yeah, let's get into that. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, can you, can you repeat it? I'm still processing. <laughs> the love you get in the Philippines, is it uh. the money? Or the culture, the love you get from the Philippines. Ah, okay. So if I'm going to speak for myself, I love the culture here. Although mm-hmm. sometimes it can be toxic. But if I'm reborn of a different different race and encounter the Philippines, I will fall I will fall in love with the Philippines. Yeah. No, I'm talking about, I'm talking about the um the, I'm talking the, about love. the love Filipinos give. Like to the foreigners when they get ah, here, is, the it, is, it, is the it the love? Is it the love of of like money with the foreigner can do, or is it the culture? Like Filipinos are just that way; they just want to know who everyone is. Um, what do you think? Mm. It, it depends on the individual, because to me, That's what I said, to me, same way. yeah, to me, I love my husband. I mm-hmm. never exploited him in a way that he would feel off about me. Mm-hmm. And I never talk bad in Tagalog when he's in front of me because that's this, this courtesy for him. And if I hear someone talks bad about him, uh, really, I will, <laughs> I'll show my claws. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that I said, no, you're not going to talk to my man like that. So it depends on the individual. It's mm-hmm. either the Filipina love the person, foreign or not, because of him or her. But sometimes there are people who would love you because of the money. Mm-hmm. Because of the money. So, yeah, be careful. Uh, and be that's careful. what I said. So I said, I said it's a little bit of both. I said even with the love you get, say if it, you come here and you go to a tourist area, you're going to get love. You're going to find people in the area that really want to know who you are and how you are. That's real. Mm-hmm. Filipinos, because they, Filipinos experience people and they really want to get into different cultures. They like, say for instance, if you came here and you, uh, you know, from France or something like that, you know, Filipinos are interested. They want to know about where you're from. And they'll mm-hmm. ask you in the street, they'll say, well, excuse me, where are you from? And they really want to know. They're not trying to. A lot of times, I've had kids ask me that, right? And that's when you know, because the kids tell the truth. Kids will say, "Where are you from?" And they don't even speak to English like that. That's all they know is English. And then it happens. Then they run off saying, "Oh," and they be like, and his friend makes fun of them. "Oh, nosebleed, huh? Nosebleed?" Because they'll see you and think <laughs> you're a foreigner. I want to speak English, and then they that's happy. And then you have people that like that have come up, like say, it happens to me still to this day, where like mm-hmm. I'll be outside with Kay. And they'll say, hey, where's, where's he from? Where's he from? And they can't mess with them. Say, oh, oh, he's German. He's German. He's, he's, no, he's I white. said he's Indian. Somebody said, <laughs> oh, he's Indian, oh, yeah. You're from India? So that's why when somebody asks, oh, he's from India. I was yeah, thinking, yeah. And then I was just telling them, oh, where do you think he is he, he's from? And then he said, Canada. And <laughs> yeah, it's, always, it's funny. Filipinos <laughs> always get it wrong. They always think I'm from... <laughs> Some off-brand place like they say, "Oh, Africa!" Like, no, I'm not from Africa. But like, Africa is fine. Because, Africa's fine. You, know, you have people that look like me there. India. I was like, no, it doesn't look like Indian. You know, they say something weird. Indian yeah. national. I say oh, yeah. Indian yeah. national. Yeah, from India, yeah. Okay, okay. 
and so professor said for me the lack of money is the gap money is the bridge tool for my invite to the culture and the love will come that how the family fall in love with me yeah that's no, true mm-hmm. yes um, yes yeah. for your bro the family will definitely love you like for instance right when i met up with case family of course i had to do the introduction and we went to dinner and you know the thing with Kay that I loved about Kay's family is it wasn't there was no neediness. Like nobody needed me. I'm I don't, I don't have the money to give them, but nobody, like nobody even even asked Kay or asked me for money ever. Mm-hmm. Even her mm-hmm. family. That's and also happened. when we go out, we actually uh, chip in. Like for example, yeah. in, in the restaurant, in yeah. no birthday party, whatever. We all chip it's not in. my birthday, it's not his birthday. So we chip in with the money. Oh, how much for the total bill is two thousand? So divided by Jamie and my uncle, Apple, <laughs> all my sisters. So mm-hmm. we ended up paying like five hundred only for the two of us already. <laughs> and we ate all, uh, more than that. So that's the only thing I like about the So Jamie yeah. said just see how your Filipino interacts with you. When we take a photo and she's leaning in and putting her head on your shoulder, you can feel it's your love. Yeah, things uh-huh. like that. You can tell. But things still like be that. careful with the pickpocketers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like yeah, that's true. Uh, hmm. so the pickpocketers are wild, right? Um, I, I, I've never been pickpocketed. Kay has had me paranoid for so long, it's never happened. Kay had me so paranoid, I actually almost got into a fight with somebody in the mall. I don't want to talk about that. But I think I talked to you about it. But, um, sorry, sorry. Uh-huh. Go ahead, Abby. Go ahead. Pre, pre-pandemic, go to Divisoria or Quiapo, you would be a big team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah but yeah. Okay. Go ahead, Daddy Kay. Now, I just want to read the Peter said, let's let, like, let be, let's be honest. I don't think anyone would want to start a relationship with a homeless man, all dirty and didn't for four Of course, no. <laughs> I'm not saying like that. I'm not saying like that, Peter Wong. But like, for instance, Peter Wong, let me let me let me let me tell you what happened, right? I was with Kay, right? I didn't have any money. My son's birthday was coming up, right? You know, my son got something. Kay gave me the money. No, because that time Abigail is he just transferred to upstate. And then yeah. I was I have a good job in Thailand as a teacher and have some savings, you know. And then it's like his son's birthday and he just started he's looking for an online job. It's really not easy to find an online job that yeah. time. Because he doesn't mm-hmm. have any reputation Sorry, yet that time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, how um let me send you this. You can buy gear for your son, or I can order. I don't know, did they send you the money or I order it? They ordered it for me. Yeah, I think I ordered yeah. it and then it was sent there. So there is there is nothing wrong with helping your man. Yeah. Okay, Peter. I don't know what you're saying. I know that. It's just. No, Peter. I know you were going to contradict me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just that sometimes, if you are in 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 a situation where you really need help, and your Filipina can afford it, don't don't feel like you're this little guy. Because as Filipinas do support you, or yes. I support my husband, although not monetarily, but mm-hmm. I support my husband uh, emotionally. When he's frustrated, I let him run. Uh, that's it. That's the support that I can give to him. So if if I had, let's say, yeah, although sometimes it's me who is asking money, but it was because we're we're. I'm not giving the justification because we are married. married. Yeah, but still, I'm a professional and sometimes I feel ashamed Aww. asking him money. Aww. Yeah. That's, your husband. That's different. These guys, see, see, you got married to your husband in person after years of dating online. It's mm. different. You met him, he's <laughs> your husband. And you're asking him for money. When do you start asking him for money? When? After, after well, two, three years? Well, yeah, after well, this uh, well, he, he gave uh, he helped dad with his treatment, and yeah. he was my fiance back then. And mm-hmm. my dad kind of felt like, oh my god, are we are we am I being late? They felt like they were the gold digger. Yeah. <laughs> it's like no, 
No. No, I said no, 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 don't, <laughs> don't be. Be. And I said, and I said to 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 my dad and to my mom, you are not because if if Tim told me that, I I would break up with him right away and pay him the thirty thousand that he sent me. That's how let's say prideful I was with money. Prideful, but Tim helped us a lot when it comes to the treatment of my dad. And he mm-hmm. never, he never, he never, ano ba tong sumbat ate? How can I say sumbat in English? He never, um... I don't know how to say sumbat. Yeah. Let's, let's ask uh, our professor here, the, the <laughs> professor and Miss Anato Pinay Forever, yeah. the New York professor. <laughs> sumbat is, um, what do you call this? It, it, it's something like, you know, you um, go. talking, um talking bad about the money when he mm. sent it. So he mm. he never did that. But, he he genuinely means. is worried for my dad complain, because complain. It's, not complain. It's, it's not complain. It's more like mm. I don't know. Ate K search. <laughs> so bad. So so yeah, he, he, I never did and I, I still feel ashamed asking money. So mm-hmm. even though we're married already and I have the right to ask him money, but because of how Filipinos are wired, uh, decent yeah, yeah. Filipinos are wired, mm-hmm. we have this pride on it, financial matters. In Google, I asked Google, Google, what is some bat in English? Uh-huh. Google said, it's a, it's a blockage. What is that? And then I said, Wag mo akong sumbatan, right? In yeah. English, don't criticize me. The yes, word. yes. Oh, to, be criticized. Yeah, okay. yeah. to be criticized that, hey, I, I send you money, but but why? But why? But why this? Why that? No, I never, yeah, heard, I never heard my husband doing that. And when he helped, he helped. And he never expect anything from it. That's mm-hmm. what's good about my husband. Yeah. That's good. But uh, all that, with all that being said, I'm not gonna keep the show going. I did the, li- the live show for like four hours yesterday, and it was, it was nuts. But I'm <laughs> no, gonna end it. I'm last gonna, week, last week. Last week, yeah, I'm gonna end it on this note. I want to mm. thank everybody for coming. Uh, thank you for coming to the live show. We're gonna do it again. Uh, maybe next Saturday. Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe mm. I'll just put up a bunch of videos. But thank you guys for coming. A lot more content coming. I already have. Four videos ready to go for you guys for the week. So, yeah, I'm ready, ready, guys. <laughs> so, thank you for watching the live stream and stay tuned. There's going to be much more content. Uh, Abby, you want to say said, anything? Same Any thing. Before that, let me read well. this real quick. Uh, Peter Wong said, compared to Western women, this will never happen. And which girl spends money for a boy? Some, but in general, not. I'm blessed. Filipinas are love. Great ah, show. Enjoy. Um, let me see. Uh, JD said, I never asked for money, and then once asked, it's okay. When when my girlfriend was leaving home after Christmas trip, she really wanted to buy rice sack for family, and asked for a little help. It's appropriate. Uh, great show, enjoyed. Uh, thanks a lot for watching, J and K. What do you think when tourists can go in? Do you think it will be super uh, crowded and back ordered for plane tickets? I think so. I I know so almost. Yeah, it's gonna be super crowded and back ordered, and. Uh, See you, fam. Time for football. Woohoo. And thank oh. you, guys. Will Taylor said, awesome show. Anything, any last words, uh, Abigail? Any last words? Uh, last words for the guys who are going to Data Filipina. Uh, uh, be critical. Like Kuya Jay said, mm-hmm. have that red pill and have that blue pill. Always ready. And mix it together perfectly. <laughs> uh. They're like, yes, boom. Together. Morpheus with his <laughs> blue pill. Let me get it right. Let me get it right. I got to move K. Let me move myself. Yeah, move me. Okay. Put the back later. Oh. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. And also, um, guys, just because how family-oriented Filipinas are, 
Yeah. One way to a, heart, a Filipina's heart is her family. Treat it her is. family right. I thought it's a stoma. Respect. I think respect her. And it's a bonus if the Filipina knows how to cook. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. That's so true. That's so true. And um, that's what, that's what Filipinas... Thank uh, you, Peter. Filipinos actually enjoy doing that, you know, and that it that happened with Kay. I remember, you know, when I got married to Kay, it's like Kay actually enjoys seeing me happy, you know, like when when I when my legs are hurting, like I have an injury right now to my legs from walking too much. Kay actually is five in the morning. We didn't sleep yet, and she's rubbing my legs with the efficacy oil. And I slept like a baby for, for what? For seven hours. Seven hours. You know? yeah, the day he woke yeah. up like 1.30. From- Ate Kay's mag- magic touch. Yeah, it really is. She <laughs> put the, 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 she <laughs> put the <laughs> Filipino <laughs> love doctor on me. To, you know, but it's not even just the Filipino love doctor. I mean, it's any any loving wife should do, no matter where they are. There's women that do it all over the world. There's women that do it in the U.S. There's women that do it in Canada, Puerto Rico, everywhere. Anywhere, yeah. That's what a wife should be. Yeah, a wife should be. You know, but Filipinas ha- have it though. You know, a lot of times you're gonna find it better here. A lot of times, but still, it's everywhere. But yeah, you're guys, making, you're making uh, Abby miss the husband now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, because yeah. when he courted, he when he courted me, it was like the ikpanyang Filipino. He's more of a Filipino when it comes to courtship. Oh, mm. yeah, that's yeah. That's that's what I said. Okay, God, this is a sign that he's the one. <laughs> <laughs> this is the one because he really insist insist on let me meet your parents. When he mm-hmm. said that, me not asking him to go here. I, I don't believe you. I think I think Tim search do a lot of research how to court a Filipina. <laughs> yeah, he did his, uh, yes. He did his research and then asked me directly, but at the same time, he did insist on introducing himself to my father and mother. Mm. Irregardless of my, let's say, fear, my fear mm. that uh, maybe my parents would reject him or things like that. But yeah, and that's the experience I have opposite with the with 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 my former boyfriend. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, he doesn't want to be, you know, he doesn't want to be introduced to the family. But mm-hmm. my husband insists on. Uh, I say I always say this to my kids and to those kids who are especially the male ones. I I I I I tell them that if you are if you have good intention to the daughter, mm-hmm. always present yourself to the parents. Never forget respect the parents. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's the sign of a true man. I said, that's a sign of a true man. Yeah. Uh, and also just yeah. be honest if you, you just answer you with your girl like for example oh i'm sorry uh i love your family but you know i'm not really well enough that i can support your family but i can support you just be honest to them yeah. so the, the girl the girl the wife to be can explain it to the family not to oh you know give me give us some money you know yes, <laughs> How about yes. you, have, you need to explain it directly that because this is what I earn, you know. Because the misconception is, if you have a foreign foreigner, foreign husband or a foreign wife, the foreign wife is rich or they got they got the they got the G's, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. they don't have that. They are also ordinary ordinary people. They are not CEO of a company. Yeah. So Jay, I, yeah. I have last word, huh, Before you go, uh-huh. sure. my last word. Is the WAP is coming soon, guys? So Pinay Forever, there's a WAP. Pinay Forever. There's gonna Do-an, be Do-an. on the vlog this Do-an week. Pinay Forever, Doan, yeah. And for this game, week, guys. There's yeah. a WAP. Actually, there is a counter song for that by her enemy, mm. Cardi B. Um, Hey Mama, and it it's a rap song, but it portrays the woman in a in a in a good light. So you, mm-hmm. you need to listen to that because it was like released three years ago before the WAP. Okay. Well, we hey, won't Mama. listen to any songs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, uh, I don't Nicki Minaj. 
I want to read all your members. That's what yeah, I'm yeah. doing here. Guys, thank you so much for all the members for the super chat, a big man, and some other uh, super chat that we received today. I forgot the name, but thank you so much. Uh, Jack Hobson, this is for the member, TBF member. Jack Hobson, shout out. Dexter Perkins, Monroe Smith, he's already a member. Nate Cali, traveling Mexican. Jack, ah, Jack Hobson has two accounts. <laughs> Jack Hobson has two accounts. I don't know if it's Jack also, but we have two Jack Hobson in the in the house. <laughs> Stormy Norman, Henry Man, thank you so much for the super chat, Henry Man. Gomer one seven one, Will Teta, Jeff Dingo, the Professor, Maria Josefina Coloma, Sis Jojo, Jay Brown, Danica Garcia, Roberto Carrillo, the Big O Experience, Anthony Powell, Advincula A, Advincula Al, Dan the Defiant, the Wallace Live, Hybrid Pinoy, Simple Rocco, thank you for the super chat. Pinay Forever, Lamont Taylor, Rob Cook, Mr. Mr. Afro Troop TV, Cliff and Rue, Isi Hernandez, Douglas DeSico, Exotic Filipina, Kaylor, Charles Sakana, Tony Anderson, Ken Leave, Terry Campbell, Life is a Human, Jojo Jojo, Morris Howard, K. Dallas, John Thomas, I see him here, Cecilia Salamat, Big97917, thank you, Tampa Life, Craig McCoy, Clifton Palmer, Gonzo660, Eve Kalmas Kitchen Canada, the J Maverick Show, and Far From Home. Thank you, guys, yeah. for being a member Thank and you. more members to come. <laughs> and special special sa- shout out to Ati Bang, Pinay Forever. Hi. Hi. <laughs> she's there. She's still there. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think she's there, yeah. <laughs> a special shout out to Pinay Forever from yes, Ati Bang. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. So right, yeah, happened. yeah, guys. A way, a true way to a Filipina's heart is through her family and how you it's treat true. her family. Mm-hmm. You know, I said that too. I said that too in a video. I forgot I spoke about it, and mm-hmm. I said that that's the way because the family doesn't approve. You know, mm-hmm. you're always gonna be at you're always gonna be at odds. You gotta win over the family. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. very important. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, guys, see you, see you next live show. Don't know where you're going. Right you gotta get See you later. Bye. Have a good night. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye, mga atit kuya.